It's not forever. Seconds turn to history. Things change, even when we fight them to stay the same. We're always moving forward, in urgency to defy being left behind. Four tires, four tires, four tires. Is open. There's no time to stop. What came before can't be changed. Outrun the failures, the trophies, and the man behind you. The past is all around us. All that's left is what lies ahead. Live from Racing's last great coliseum, Fox Sports welcomes you, and the sounds you'll hear reverberating will echo. It's a uh, universal language of great competition. You're so close here, you can almost inhale the action. And on this St. Patrick's Day, which driver will feel the luck of the Irish going around this half mile for 500 laps? The weather, it's uh, cool, it's cloudy, it's comfortable, it's not raining. As we welcome you to the fifth race of the season, we're coming to you from down on the grid with the cars all lined up, ready to go. We'll catch it out at the start of the race. The guys will be calling the race, of course, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer with Mike Joy. I'm Chris Myers and hope everybody's having a, a great week. It's been a good start to the season. Four different winners, competition, Kind of evened out a little bit, but at this place, guys like Kyle Bush, familiar names, Kozlowski, Logano, all have multiple wins. Who are you keeping your eye on today? Well, I'm, I'm keeping my eye on the back of the field because we've got Ross Chastain starting dead last, Chris Busher, two spots in front of him. And the, the, the hard part about this particular place is you have to go. And if you don't go, you're going to get lapped. So those guys are in a position from qualifying with all the unknowns and everything that happened in qualifying to have to go to the front. Well, what happens, Clint, when that, when that doesn't go right? You will wind up in somebody else's mess that happens Absolutely. in the middle of the field. And we've seen that several times already this year, by the way. You're going to keep an eye on the back of the field? Yeah. No, 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 no. I, folks, will take you to the front of the field where the action is. Look at the champ. Ryan Blaney sitting on the pole, a big bull for him. I think he's going to continue this momentum that he's been on, points leading all the way. Keep an eye on him. Hamlin's up there, won this race in the fall. I think the Gibbs boys were sitting here in front of one of them. That's Christopher Bell, 20 ball right behind me. Keep an eye on him. Got some big heavy hitters in this. That five car right there, keep an eye on him. You know he'll be high, wide, and handsome. A check on the lead lap, and if we go back to last week, Toyotas took over in Phoenix. Christopher Bell at Oklahoma finished the domination with his seventh career win. For today, Ryan Blaney on the front row, his first pole since 1992, so Ford actually has the front row. And a story talking about two-time cup champ Joey Logano, the worst start in his career since his rookie season. For more on Joey and that situation, let's check in with Regan Smith. Well, Chris, there's absolutely no denying that it's been a poor start for Joey Logano right now. Buried back in 30th in points, but dial up Bristol, a racetrack where he's won twice before on the pavement. Of course, none of those recently, though, not since 2015 has he done that. Friday, though, the speed they wanted in this 22 car, they started to find it qualified fourth. A great starting spot. Talking to Joey this morning, he said it's going to be important for them to score stage points today. But more importantly than just getting stage points early on, he said if we can go out there and win, that changes everything for this season right now for us Chris thank you very much Regan and how about that is it more Joey the driver or Ford the car the issues so far because they've qualified well and some Fords have shown speed well the only one car has been able to seal the deal the 12 car right we keep an eye on him Blaney he's been able to show that point taken starting on the pole today but starting fourth this is a good shot in the arm for the 22 team right Fort Ford right I think this is going to be a turnaround day for Joey Logano we need those stage points we need to get back up there in the points scenario and I think it happens today right here at Bristol the thing that concerns me about Joey Logano is he's a grinder and usually when they qualify good they can figure out how to stay up front they did that at Las Vegas but seeing them not close the deal 
week after week is is what concerns me because of the fact that that's what they do uh, that that's how their team has succeeded through the years it's never been on uh, it, it has been on sheer speed sometimes but it's always been on just that grit and desire and figure out how to stay up front so I want to see him pull off one of those days from start to finish you after, can't keep a after, good man after, down after Kevin two-time champ count on it yeah, and he did win on dirt we'll talk more about concrete this place will get loud in a bit you know they play of course they race here at Bristol but they played an NFL game a college football game a major league baseball game is coming soon ask your brave fans about that at least that's what we hear here's what's <laughs> ahead as we continue live We've got a colossal show at the Coliseum right here on race day. Coming off his second top 10 finish of the season, the 2311 driver Tyler Reddick sits down with Kevin Hart. Christopher Bell was sizzling in the desert last week. The Phoenix winner will join us live. And we're getting ready to rumble. Michael Buffer sets the stage for the Gladiators here at Bristol. All that, and we welcome back an old friend, Daryl Waldrip. Plus, Michael goes to the grid as we getting ready to boogity, boogity, boogity here on race day. Back live here at Bristol Motor Speedway with Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, Chris Myers, and starting today, Tyler Reddick. Well, he has, a, he has one top 10 finish, uh, Kevin, here. Even though we've watched him, he had success in uh, Austin the last week, and he hopes to do a little bit better today. Well, he's had some success this year, and, and when I talked to Tyler Reddick this week, you could really feel the confidence and just the way that he presented himself about his season and who he was, and we had a great conversation as we sat down this week. Tell me your season in one word. How would you describe it so far? One word? One word. Well, it's stressful. Stressful. Yeah. Tyler Reddick, I mean, this has been a struggle for him. Tyler Reddick been on a bit of a rough stretch. Tyler Reddick has run out of race car and run out of time. The last two weeks have been, have been rough. It seems to me like you expect to win everywhere that you go now. Yeah, it's pretty dang accurate. It's a wild thing because I remember we're all high-fiving each other if we got a top 15, right? Yeah. And now if anything but winning is just, um, it, it's weird how that changes. Your organization high profile everything. I, I mean, I see it in your shoes. I mean, you yes, sir. These aren't even out for like another month and a half, I think. So. Yeah. I feel like Boyer, he's kind of challenged me with my shoes. And I, I feel like I need some advice on trying to get my shoe. I think you just find a... No, nope, you can't say it right now. Because then he'll go out and buy them. Having Michael Jordan, you got Bubba as a teammate, having Denny Hamlin. Yeah, he's always sitting in, in the meetings, always giving his feedback. I didn't know if he was going to give me grief about when we got together in, in turn one and two. Wow, did not see that coming. I knew his car was pretty loose. He'd been kind of fighting it. Uh, I think it just kind of surprised him there when that happened. OK, well, it happened. Your teammate. Yes. Bubba. It seems like you guys genuinely care about yes. each other. I mean, I results. certainly feel like we really do go out of our, our way to communicate with each other. There is a time and a place where we will race each other hard, but I feel like when we know one is better than the other, we do a really good job of just being good teammates. When I watch you navigate traffic, and I, I would compare you and Larson because you're creative in what you do. Probably a lot of the similarity that you're pointing at between me and Kyle comes from, we both grew up racing outlaw carts in California, and uh, you had to be really, really aggressive. I feel like my driving style is also that way. I drive the car into the corner until I hit that limit, and because of what I grew up doing, I've been able to drive myself out of it more times than not. Everything from your shoes, to your paint scheme, to the way you talk, the way you drive, screams confident. Tell us how you got to that point. I feel like when Next Gen Racing came into our sport, right, for me, that was like a great reset button. My confidence was sky high right from that, that point. From the outside looking in, you have a fast car. You have a great team, you have fancy looking shoes, and you guys are gonna win a lot of races. Winning is stressful. You guys are in position to, to do what you need to do. 
Well, interesting, Kevin. Uh, obviously, he's had some success, but what does he have to do to break through, to get into the championship four, to really be put with the elite driver? Well, he puts a lot of pressure on himself because now he knows he's got everything that he wants. Yeah. He's got the situation that he wants, and it's high profile. Uh, everything that he has going on is high profile, and I think he just has to win. Uh, those are the expectations that he has, and he has to go out and meet those expectations for himself, not anybody else. Um, but I love the way the confidence and the way that he presents himself about his ability and his team to go out and do that. Do not forget this close at Vegas. He almost ran Kyle Larson the best down car. in that five yeah. car at the, at the end of that race yeah. and won. His day's coming. He's got all the ingredients, like you said. You just have to put it together. Very hard to do in a Cup Series. But when you think about guys that run the high line, right? You're going to see the high line here at Bristol today. Somebody's going to master that. Somebody's going to hit the balance. Just might be Tyler Reddick. Yep, starting deep in the field, but three of our four winners this year have started beyond 10th or further back. So he has a good shot. On your podcast, Happy Harvick, you can see wherever you get your Fox podcast. Tuesday and Thursday, you can see that complete interview. And also hear him talk about more horsepower. More, <laughs> I can't Everybody wait. wants more I, horsepower. I, yeah, which, which we like, including uh, Jamie Little and the driver, the Bush Light driver she is with. Jamie? Hi, Chris. Well, the good news for Ross Chastain, he has three top tens coming into this race. Bad news is, Ross, you're starting last. With all the talk about this tire wear, excessive tire wear, how hard are you willing to push early, stay on the lead lap, and get to the front? I, I got to be honest, this is a bucket list item I never thought I would <laughs> click off. I've never, that I can remember, qualified last with nothing else happening. It's kind of a, I think it's a badge of honor I'm going to take it as. And I was able to be the slowest one yesterday, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, for our for our Bushlight fishing car uh, with the spotted bass on the side, one of the four, uh, you know, collector cans coming out. Um, yeah, like those four cans, the four tires are going to have to get used up like a good Bushlight does. So I don't know. Um, it's going to be a good day's work, though, a good blue-collar day to uh, to go to work. We got 500 laps, and, you know, I, I feel like our car is definitely good enough. Um, I had the car I needed to qualify top half, top 10, you know, top half of the field yesterday. I just way over committed in qualifying. I mean, I was ready to run a, a flat. I just ran the wrong second bracket. Well, the car looks good. Good luck today. It's Ross Chastain coming from the back, Chris. All right, thank you very much. When we continue live, I want to remind you that Bush Light is giving away a chance to win a fishing trip for two plus tickets to the Bristol race in September. Follow Bush Beer on X and enter during every commercial break using hashtag break for Bush. Hashtag sweepstakes. You'll have a chance to win. Good luck. Coming up, an old friend, a familiar voice, Daryl Waltrip, the Hall of Famer. We know about asphalt, dirt, concrete. Now we're back to the concrete. And Christopher Bell dominated in the desert. How will we do here? He's got a couple of top fives, hoping for his first Bristol win. Kevin and Quinn continue with me if you stay with us. This is the make or break moment. Not just for the day, but for the years to come. This is where a race isn't just about the race. It's about the doors it can open. That kid is amazing. The number of fans wearing your number. This is the chance to carve your name into the history books. This is the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Live here in Bristol, Tennessee, the Hall of Famer Daryl Waltrip, the lead voice when Fox was NASCAR coming on the air more than two decades ago. And, of course, the outstanding driver. So his success here at Bristol set the mood for us to give him a call and ask him to help out. Bristol Motor Speedway. When it comes to winning here, hey, I know a thing or two or three or, well, yeah, you get the picture. I've won 12 times here, seven in a row. It's me again in victory lane for you. <laughs> An easy race on the concrete. Thunder Valley provides all the excitement the driver can handle. And a short track means short timber. I plead guilty, but I'm not alone. But I remember back in 2002, I think it was, happy wasn't so happy. Kevin! Oh, Kevin! And there was smoke and there was fire. Tony's not very happy. Oh, no. Now, while no one is better than me at uh, Thunder Valley, these guys can hold their own. Rusty Dale, Gordon, and, and then the Bush Brothers. They're not too bad around here either. They race at night. They race their own dirt. But today, we're back to our roots. Back to the concrete. Enjoy Bristol. Enjoy the race. Oh, oh, oh. I almost forgot. 
Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing at Bristol. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody boogity boogity like uh, like Daryl Waltrip. Uh, boy, he was great. You guys are now stepped have stepped into that analyst role uh, that he so established with Fox over the years and uh, set a standard that you guys are holding up well. Well, I feel like that's a standard that's going to be really hard to ever achieve. Daryl just had so much personality. He had all the race wins and stats to back it up on the racetrack and was just was and is such an instrumental part of what where NASCAR is today. Jaws guy. Yeah, that's His it. nickname yeah. was Jaws yeah. for a reason. The man has the lines. He had the accolades behind the wheel. This place, oh my gosh, he would knock it out of the park at this place. This was his playground. But as you see, he still got that fire. That's what and, I love about ODW. And most of the drivers, the dirt idea was a nice try, novelty created, but the, the concrete is what most drivers, crew chiefs, and I think even race fans at Bristol are happy to have back. 100%. You hear all these drivers all all week long building up into this uh, before the season previewing the season Bristol Bristol's back on the concrete can't wait to get there I love what we saw yesterday Kevin practice was all over the place a lot of unknowns we're sitting here trying to preview what we're going to talk about today we don't yeah. even know what confusion we're say. well it, it was kind of like a dirt track yesterday because these guys were all very confused after they went out on the racetrack and then they would go back out and their cars would be all over the place there were marbles everywhere <laughs> cars were sliding around they went out to qualify they didn't know how fast to go they most everybody missed their mark in, in qualifying yesterday, so I think everybody in the field is confused as to where they want to be with their car today and a little bit anxious to get this race started because they don't know what to expect. And what does that mean for us? That means excitement, guys. Awesome. You're going to have people it missing it. You're going to have people hitting that setup and marching to the front. They're all over the place, and we're going to be here to show you. Yeah, you were saying marbles everywhere. It's not like guys were losing their marbles after trying to set up for this <laughs> thing. They were. And this, <laughs> this is a short track, but drivers uh, have long memories when it comes to sometimes temper tantrums or getting into it. It looks like to the start of this year, things are relatively calm. We don't have to worry about any payback. Do you expect anything to come out of this just from any lingering well, hostility, if we can call it that, I between drivers? I don't know if you remember the clash, but there were a lot of people yes. that were mad, and I hope a lot of them are mad at each other again when they leave here today, <laughs> to be honest with you, because usually you guys are out here making fun of me because I did something <laughs> wrong. Oh. Oh, no, who could forget you getting out of that car back it was here? Right about Chase here. Was it here? It was right about here. That's what we love about Bristol. This Coliseum creates those moments, those intense moments for these drivers. It is tense out there. You're trying your all, you're driving harder than you ever have on any other racetrack, and somebody takes that from you, you're ready to fight. Well, last week in the Phoenix Desert, Christopher Bell came back from what was an early slow pit stop before the start of the final stage of the race, worked his way through the field, captured the checkered flag. I mean, you talk about dominating and do being dialed in. He won by more than five seconds, his seventh career win. They've all come on, on different tracks. He's trying to go back to back for the first time in his career. Boy, Toyota's, uh, boy, you guys had it figured out. Joe Gibbs Racing last week. Thanks for being with us, and congrats again on the win. Yeah, absolutely. We're making this a have it here, Clint. Yes, yes. Hey, real quick, you had not led even a single lap. I don't even think you had a top five going into Phoenix, and then you just you take it over. I know Bristol, you've had top fives here, and you're hoping for your first victory that's not dirt, I guess, on, on the concrete. How are you looking at it today? Yeah, I mean, I feel really optimistic about today, and that, that stat is, <laughs> it feels misleading to myself at Phoenix, because yeah. I've always felt like that's been one of my better tracks, and just haven't been able to get the results there, but uh, really, really rewarding to have a successful test in the offseason. Uh, and then to put it all together in the race last week. So what does that mean for your team? You, you went to Phoenix last week, won the race, dominated the race. You know that you're going back there to race for a championship. And you guys, are, every time you talk, it screams, I, I know I need to win this championship. I know I can win the championship. I've got the team to win the championship, the cars. You know you have everything to do that. And now you go to Phoenix and win the race. So what does that mean for the rest of the regular season and going back to race for that championship from a confidence and team standpoint? Yeah, I mean, obviously, having such a good race at the championship event track is something that's going to instill a lot of confidence in me for whenever we go back there. But the road to get there is not easy, as no. you know. So uh, we won, and we're in the playoffs. But those playoff points, man, that's what the name of the game is. And unfortunately, the last oh, two gosh. years, we have not been able to execute on playoff points. And I've always been the guy that's been mired in the uh, in the field and, and basically had to win in that round of eight to make well, it. I appreciate you saying that because I'm going to block Clint right now because he is anti-points on everything. No, there no, it, I was anti-points on where we're talking about the duels at Daytona winning the Daytona <laughs> 5 champ. 
enough with that. Debbie Downer over here set you up. Man, we haven't even seen of you before Phoenix. You win the race. You took care of that. You shut that naysayer up, didn't you? Now the points come to doubt. Now we're talking about a, a repeat. Can we repeat today at Bristol? I'm tired of talking about Phoenix, Christopher. Tell me, tell me why you're going to win this race at Bristol. I mean, look at the previous two Bristol Concrete races. This car was right up there. See? So. That's what I, I want to hear. I, I feel really good. This is literally my favorite track on the schedule, uh, but it is extremely different this weekend. I'm sure you guys saw the amount of marbles that we had yeah. yesterday, and no rubber was getting put on the track. The tires were just bald at the end of 40 laps. All right, and we're right in front of your car. In the championship four last couple of years, so I'm not Debbie Downer. I'm just stating facts. Good luck today, okay? It'll be your Thank first back-to-back -back yeah. win. He's, getting, luck, on my, he's getting on my nerves. We haven't even started the race. All right, so <laughs> thanks for coming by. Uh, you guys got to head up to the booth. All right. He's one of the co-favorites, by the way, in this race, just so you know. Favorite. All right. He's not your favorite. You're not his favorite. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, but I, he's one of my favorite. I know. I Come know on. We got to go. Win a, win a championship. Whoa, Let's head over to Michael Waltrip uh, for the grid walk. Michael, where are you? Hey, Chris, I'm uh, just off turn two, and I found my amigo Daniel Suarez. And Daniel, what is your favorite Luke Bryan song? Country girl. Country girl, shake, shake it, it for, for me, me now. now. Another one, another one. What a crazy looking car. You got Luke Bryan, you got fish, a lot going on here. A lot going on here. This car, it not just look amazing, but it's fast, Mikey. And I'm really lo looking forward to, to pass a few enemigos here and I put this jockey Camaro all, all the way to the front. You know what? I talked to him before, uh, just before we went on camera, and he said, I don't care where I'm starting. I'm going to the front. That's a good feeling, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Let's go to the front. You, you know, yesterday, the, the, the whole day was a little crazy. Qualifying practice, but the car had good speed, so hopefully we can start making progress very early. How about shake it for me, girl? Shake it for me, girl. Let's go. <laughs> Ricky, I just looked over my shoulder and saw the turn two wall. Did you see that day I almost left here, this earth, I mean? I did see that, Mikey. Uh, this place is intense, and things happen like that. So uh, we're gladiators in here, and we're, we're ready to go to battle. I'm glad that you're still here, <laughs> and we get to go play golf together. I love it, too. Have a good day. Hey, Macy, you remember when I almost wrecked that day and almost ended it? I don't remember it but because I wasn't born yet, but it does give me chills to watch. Let's go to break and come back for pre-race festivities. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Amidst the rolling Appalachian Mountains carved into the border between Virginia and Tennessee stands a concrete behemoth. This is Bristol Motor Speedway, an unexpected beauty where the symphony of speed scores the art of racing. Born in 1961, this tight half-mile track with its steep banking was designed to push the boundaries of possibility and challenge drivers like never before. Faster and faster and faster they turn. It's a place that's defined drama. Oh! The fiery spirit of Earnhardt. Earnhardt takes the checkered flag. You're the ice-cold brilliance of Gordon. Jeff Gordon will win at Bristol. Yeah. The clean, sweet dominance of Bush. The first man ever to sweep all three touring series. Generations of families have gathered here, drawn by tales of epic battles, yearning for more. Intensity, tempers flaring. And while the slumbering titan may be silent now, when it awakens, you will know, for the thunder will echo throughout the hills, and the earth will rumble! It's Bristol, baby! Uh, he's the perfect guy to talk about gladiators in a coliseum, and if you expect to fight or at least a heck of a race, it's a short track race coming to you live in a moment. As you are able, and remove your hats as the Cherokee High School Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Mike Rye from the Van Sant Church of Christ offers today's invocation. Dear God, we thank you for being good to us, and you are much better to us than any of us really deserve, but we thank you for your goodness and your protection. 
You protect us through the efforts of our military, both who have and who are serving our nation, either here or abroad. We thank you for our first responders in our local communities, and we're really thankful for our sponsor and our host of today's race. We ask that you protect all the participants of today's race, their teams, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome American Idol contestant known as the singing barber, Noah Peters. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the Well, Chevy Camaros took the first three races. Toyota dominated last week in Phoenix. It's today Ford's turn. They own the front row to start here in Bristol. Ready to go racing here at Bristol Motor Speedway. In the last great coliseum, where nothing comes easy. A place rich with racing history. Iconic memories etched forever in the minds of those who were there to witness. Generation after generation, the masses ascend upon this great spectacle, expecting a show, a theater of speed, drama, and passion. Can you do? Go get the crew to hype you up. Stand behind you like. With the sport's best, battle it out until there is only one left standing. Are you not entertained? This is Bristol. We catch lightning in the bottle. Set fire to water. Coming up the nozzle on the fire hose. Fire and water. Welcome back to Thunder Valley. NASCAR back on the concrete at Bristol. World's fastest five-eighths mile. They have repainted the walls in traditional red and white. The concrete surface is back, and we have more questions than we have answers. <laughs> I'm Mike Joy, along with Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer. NASCAR this morning put down the resin compound in the low groove of this racetrack in the corners, trying to make the low groove, well, as fast as the high groove without the traction compound. Now, that will wear off as the race goes on and create a whole lot of unknowns from start to finish and that's where the excitement builds for me right a lot of unknowns look at yesterday's practice that first group a practice they were out there and a lot of this resin you speak of a lot of grip is what that means they're easy peasy not a lot of changes flip to the uh, plan b of what i called it the group b went out and theirs was chaotic a lot of people coming in making adjustments as it wore out they were slipping and sliding around that's what really shook yesterday up and by the way the starting lineup for today so keep an eye on that i think that's going to be so exciting to watch well that starting lineup is shook up and as you look at this field we've got guys in the back of the pack Ross Chastain is starting dead last in this race and that is panic because of the fact that he needs to move forward quickly before they start lapping cars but the real story is exactly what you both talked about confused drivers confused crew chiefs and everybody's guessing and you know what that means 
fun for us. Well, and this is the place where always somebody leaves mad at somebody. That's how this place has built its reputation since 1961. So how do you be aggressive here and yet keep all four wheels under you so you have something to race with at the end? I like the old Ken Schrader saying, cautiously aggressive. And how you do that is just try to do everything that you can because you know you have to be aggressive and move forward but you don't want to make anybody mad you want to try to make as few people mad as possible so that you can keep your fenders on the car and move forward well and the edginess of this racetrack is what provides that right you it's so on edge every single lap hardly breathing around here completely wore out giving it you're all behind the wheel and somebody steps out of line and takes that from you buddy the gloves are off you're ready to fight uh, what i think i've seen Oh, yeah, a couple weeks, a couple years ago. Oh, Maybe yeah. even here you, we go. Huh? Here we go. <laughs> One thing you can't do here, though, is cruise. There's no time to do that. Somebody's going to put you a lap down. And no place to do that, right? You want to say you're off. You need a, a, an adjustment in the pits. You cannot just find a hole and hide here. This is going to be like a dirt race. The, the groove is going to evolve from the bottom to the top of the racetrack as the day goes on. So get set for 500 laps of excitement on Bristol Motor Speedway Racing's last great coliseum. Drivers are strapped in and at the ready. Let's go trackside. And now, race fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome NASCAR legends Richard Petty, Kyle Petty, Richard Childress, and Joe Gibbs. Gentlemen, start your engines. And that's the quietest this place is going to be for the next several hours as NASCAR takes on the concrete at Bristol. Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Racing at Bristol. Well, let's go back to the end of 2023 and revisit our championship four and how they're doing in this young season. William Byron started it off with a win at Daytona. Kyle Larson won in Las Vegas. Christopher Bell won last week in Phoenix. And the champ, Brian Blaney, all he's done is pile up more points than anybody in this young season so far. Let's dial him up. Ryan Blaney is boring the boys up in the booth. You got us? Yes, sir. I got you. Buddy, just things keep clicking for you. Picking up right where you left off last year to the championship. You're leading the points. Now the pole at Bristol. Things are pretty good, huh? Yeah, you know, we, we put together a really good you know, start to 24 here this year. And huge credit, you know, to the 12 boys uh, for, for working really hard week in and week out. You know, so we're... We're pulling away at it, uh, but it's fun to have a great group like this around me. You know, I couldn't ask for more, so nice to start up front here in Bristol. Hopefully we can uh, put 500 good laps together today. It's going to change like crazy, so it's going to be really hard to figure out what you need with your car and where the track's going, and that's what makes this place really fun. All right, man. Well, the good news is they're all behind you. Let's keep it that way. Good luck out there. All right. Thanks, guys. Brian Blaney will start from the pole. Let's have a look at the starting lineup for today's 500 lapper. There is Blaney with his first pole since 2022 and Josh Berry with his best career start. Row number two, Joey Logano, a two-time Bristol winner on concrete, will share the second row with Denny Hamlin, who got his third Bristol win last fall. Jamie Little. Well, Mike, practice and qualifying was a challenge for most drivers. Denny Hamlin, not so much. He qualified third. His crew chief, Chris Gabehart, told me that even though there's a lot of unknowns, their setup is almost identical to how they ran here in the fall. They won that race, so they made some educated guesses for today and a few adjustments, but that 11 car expected to be good. Starting fifth, Dawsonville, Georgia's Chase Elliott. And starting sixth right behind him is Chase Elliott from Mitchell, Indiana. All right, row four, start seven. Michael McDowell in that 34 car, Bane. He has been hot. And actually here in Bristol as well, finished uh, Bristol best of six. William Byron on his outside, two top tens last three races. Row five, Bubba Wallace has his best ever Bristol start. And Kyle Larson, 2021 Bristol winner. Regan Smith. 
Well, Mike Kyle Larson already has a win this season to go to, to start off with. And now we come to what is considered one of his best racetracks that we go to, Bristol. Eight top tens in his last nine starts here, including that win that you just mentioned. On a day-to-day -day where we expect drivers to be moving all over the racetrack, Cliff Daniels told me there is nobody he would rather have in the car than Kyle Larson, who is one of the best at doing that. Keep an eye on him today. Row six, Martin Truex Jr. has the best average running position per every single lap of all drivers this year. And Christopher Bell, last week's winner in the desert in Phoenix. Row seven is Harrison Burton with his best Bristol start. And Kyle Busch, an eight-time Bristol winner. 36 drivers in the field. The rest will uh, scroll across the bottom of the screen. And let's visit with the driver who has the best average finish of all drivers in 2024. Hey, Ty, Kevin Harvick up in the, in the Fox booth. Uh, you're coming off your career best finish last week. You got a, rewarded with a great practice session yesterday with all kinds of things to challenge. What are you thinking for today, buddy? Yeah, you know, I feel like we had a great day yesterday, but we're, we're going to be good today. We're, we're going to come back and hammer down. Uh, I appreciate everybody out there, all my, all my sponsors, and happy uh, St. Patrick's Day to all y'all out there. Well, have a great day. We, we're having fun watching you, and, and uh, good luck. Thank you. Todd will roll off 19th. Now, way toward the back will be Chris Buescher and Ross Chastain, both of whom had a problem on their qualifying lap, but otherwise had fast cars. Buescher will start 34th. Chastain will start. Well, he's the caboose on this train. 36th and last. Bush Light's giving away a fishing trip for two and tickets to the Bristol race in September. Follow Bush Beer on X and enter during every commercial break using hashtag break for Bush, hashtag sweepstakes for your chance to win. Let's check with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Mike, we're short track racing. That means beating and banging cars, getting to the outside wall. Now, that will be fun to watch, but it can cause a problem in the rear of the car. Let's go to our Toyota Camry virtual cutaway car, and I'll show you exactly what can happen back there. There's one in the left rear and the right rear. It's called the rear tow length. There's one on the left rear and the right rear, and it's like a miniature tie rod. It hooks to the A-frame, it hooks to the spindle and the hub. When you do hit the wall or another car, it can snap in two. It's a steel tow length, but it can still snap in two. And that causes the rear tire where it has no control whatsoever. Now, I don't want to say it's easy to replace, but it's two bolts. Crews can replace that. Get that tow link back in place, and you're back on the way. I want to say it's easy to do, guys, but when they're saying pace cars coming, it's not so easy. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Well, something's got to be the weakest link. And this is why it's so easy right here. All it takes is one slap of the wall. You see A.J. Allmendinger last year, boom, big contact out there. You've been that alignment piece, that toe link, if you will, on that back. You are coming down and going to fix and replace that piece immediately. That will take you out of the race and ruin your day. Easy to do here running that outside line, Kevin. Well, and there's just so many things that can go wrong so fast here to do that. Well, the sun is paying playing peekaboo with heavy overcast clouds here. Temp is 61, track temp 82 uh, due to the sun, but it's mostly cloudy. Gonna be uh, sun and clouds all day long. Today, 500 laps. Stages one and two, 125 laps each. The final stage is half the race. Now, pit road. You have to enter under caution in turn two and exit in turn one, no matter where your pit is. They pit on both sides of the racetrack. Fuel window, 175 laps, but boy, they're going to need tires before that, it seems, especially on these first two sets. Here's some Kyle Larson radio for you. All right, here we go at Bristol in the last great Coliseum. Off the day for a race. Beautiful spring day in East Tennessee. Looking forward to it. Thank you to every 500 laps ahead of us tonight at Bristol. Let's uh, go make the best of it. Have a good night. Yeah, and as I listen to that, I think Cliff is sitting on a pit box just thinking, you know what, boys, today I'm just going to let him cook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, because they painted the walls the traditional red and white, because we're back on the concrete, and because it's Bristol, the pace car is in. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. Let's go cruise the concrete. Gotta love you some DW. He loved this place. 
And it loved him. Out of Ford's up front so far. Well, you see Ryan Blaney get loose, and this is going to happen a lot in these first few laps until they get that resin run in and get the, the top layer knocked off Ooh. of it and the rubber, rubber put into it. We see Josh Berry underneath Ryan Blaney, but things are going to happen fast here at the beginning, boys. I see Josh Berry slipping and sliding in that resin you speak of, and Blaney holding to it pretty well, tight on his outside that middle will stay good as you know for a few laps here as the track is clean but as we get later in the race that middle will only last for a couple laps right now that middle will, will last a little bit longer than it will later Blaney trying to keep Barry down and sometimes they're separated only by an inch in the middle of the corner Josh Barry with the lead you can see him still struggling to put the power down on the exit of the corners Chase Briscoe for third against Logano Denny Hamlin trying to follow suit. Well, you see him starting to line up on the bottom of the racetrack, and you see Joey Logano and William Byron trying to stay as close to those inside cars as possible because they know they need to get down, and that train's getting longer. That beep, beep you hear, that's Joey Logano backing up. Well, when you look in your mirror and you're and you, when you look out your window and you've got... 10 car lengths in front of you and you look in your mirror and you've got a whole field of cars lined up behind you you know there's going to be some pressure from behind to get bumped out of the way very reminiscent of bristol of old right that's what it looks like to me this obviously the resin on the bottom is a preferred line right now joey was struggling to get down still can't get down freight trained on the bottom so far but we know that outside will eventually come in it's going to eventually come in but until the the bottom uh, like you say with that resin wears in and wears off, starts to wear off that top lane is just not going to be fast enough to, to make the, the distance up but the, the, the other thing that we heard a lot about from practice is tire wear and this bottom of the racetrack is going to wear these tires out now remember at the back uh, busher Chris Busher has already gained six spots Ross Chastain is up two as Josh Berry at his uh, home race here out in front I am so impressed with Josh Berry. Huge turnaround for him, Rodney Childers, everybody on this four car, exactly what the doctor ordered out here leading at Bristol. And Josh Berry is just a phenomenal short track racer. And like you say, Clint, this is this is what they needed. They qualified well, showing the capability of what they can do as a team and being able to lead these laps is confidence, not only for the driver, but for the whole team and organization. Well, still, he and Ryan Blaney have put two seconds on the field in just 10 laps. Yeah, it looks like third place car of, of Denny Hamlin is definitely holding up some of these guys, um, you know, back in back in the field. So uh, clean air is, is king right now. And at some point, you're going to catch some cars and have to start working through lap traffic. All right, we well, yeah. talk about who's bumper. being able to move. Man, I've seen some cars already. Brad Keselowski, one in particular, on this outside, burning that outside end. Those guys are getting bottled up on the bottom. He rolls them around one by one on the outside, up uh, five spots so far. And you saw Chris Busher in a hurry to get to the front. He moved Noah Gregson up and out of the low groove uh, to gain the spot. Now he's a bit bottled up in traffic. There's the BuildSubmarines.com cam on board Busher, who's had to come from the next to last row. Well, he knows he's got to go. There it is, Denny Hamlin. He's following suit. These spotters are telling those guys. The boys are starting to make hay on that outside. Rolled right around Briscoe on the outside. Yeah, it's making a liar out of me here, Clint. That, that second groove, for whatever reason, is coming in. This is the first time that we've raced on the resin on the bottom of the racetrack, but it seems like that, that second groove is definitely faster right now with certain cars. Now, this resin is used at a lot of racetracks to help equalize the competition between grooves, but it's the first time they've used it at Bristol. Here goes Bubba underneath Briscoe. This is great racing. Side by side, there's several of them all the way through the field. I like that that outside line's rolling right there on their door, just barely on their outside. They're able to pick it off, and I think it's because they're taking their exit away. If they can just get on their outside quarter panel, by the time they get to the exit, they take that exit away, and the pass is made. Back at 13th place. Eric Jones, Christopher Bell, last week's winner. Byron, Gibbs, Bush, all right there. We see William Byron up a little bit in the center of the racetrack, in the center of the corner, diamond in the corner. And I think as we run here, for sure, the racetrack's going to keep moving up. But 
Here we got a pass for second place with Denny Hamlin going underneath Ryan Blaney. Last year's winner, Denny Hamlin, man. You knew you was going to have to beat this guy. His car is extremely fast. Again, I think all the Gibbs cars are strong, especially that one right there. And we were just talking, I just mentioned eight laps ago that, that Denny Hamlin was 10 car lengths behind, and all of a sudden, here he comes. Yeah, looking here outside already on the leader. Did did take any time at all. As soon as he got around Blaney, pounced on. Bump and run, turn three, car on the wall. William Byron. Keep it up there, can. Well, he had a lot of help. No caution. And while all that was happening, Denny Hamlin's taking the lead. He's struggling up there. Yep. He's up in the marbles, having trouble getting it down. Byron has damage. Here's a look at it, lower right. Three wide. I think Bell got into Logano just ever so slightly. Then he's, I think he got in the marbles up off of four and he got down to the next corner and didn't have any grip in his tires. See, the part of the wall is what that is. That or that, 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 or that toe link's broke on the right rear. And Byron has come to pit road as we stay green. And now the yellow flag waves. Apparently for debris. Got some uh, William Byron audio. This won't be pleasant. I think you're right, Kevin. Yeah, uh, totally broke. Got it there it is. You heard it. Toe broke. They're going to replace this thing. Larry just teed us up. Wasn't what previewing the, the race right here. First one, first caution. Well, with the way that you get loose here on the exit of the corner and the way that it snaps, uh, it just snaps up and it, it doesn't hit the wall square. It kind of hits the corner right there and breaks that toe link. But when you go back and look at that video, that wasn't Joey Logano's fault. That was Christopher Bell getting into Logano, which shot him into, into the 24. Anytime you're three wide at Bristol, though, that's bound to happen. There was a lot happening. Now, there is what they're replacing. Something has to be the weakest link in the suspension, as Larry explained. And it's good that it's this toe link because that's the easiest part to replace. Yeah, and right now they're on the clock to get this toe link changed because they're on the on the clock to it, that NASCAR sets with the DVP um, damage vehicle policy to be able to change the, the toe link in time before they run out of time and, and are done in the race for the day if they exceed that time limit. He broke the grinding wheel there. And quick work there. They got him another grinding right off the bat. They're going to get this thing. Hopefully, maybe just lose a couple laps. Yeah, and I think the caution was for the decal banner that, that Byron took off with his uh, rear bumper off the wall. Track is changing fast, faster than I anticipated, Kevin. Well, it, it, it definitely was very strange there with that second groove being better than the bottom. And I think a lot of that is just the resin being slick until it gets the gets run in and the rubber put on it. But it's um, it's definitely going to be confusing for us to watch and for all the drivers on the racetrack. A couple things I'm seeing, obviously, we that go. Denny Ham are going to pit here. But man, how about Chase Elliott, too? Great run for him so far. And this pit is purely because of the fact that they had high tire wear yesterday, and they know that those tires are going to be at a premium. You must enter the pits under caution at turn two and come all the way around. Regan. Well, Mike Cummins is exactly right. This is more about checking tire wear, figuring out what they have. The four car of Josh Berry, a little tight, just like practice. Big fall off so far as you see two tires for him. Didn't really want a lot of change to the balance. And the five of Kyle Larson just managing his race car right now. A lot of marbles on the top of the track. Jamie? And around on the front side, Denny Hamlin said balance is good. No big complaints for him, as you can imagine. He took the lead there, four tires. The nine of Chase Elliott said our balance is pretty good here. Another top five start for him, and he's moving forward, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. One driver. Oh, Ooh. contact Bubba Wallace and great pit stop for Bubba Wallace. Yeah. One driver stayed out, and that was Tyler Reddick, uh, who was in 20th position. Well, if tires are of that much of a premium, they ha only have nine sets of stickers and, and one from qualifying, so it'll be tight. The Food City 500 on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Bundle home and auto and save. First caution of the day for debris from William Byron uh, getting up and into the wall. Larry McReynolds, how about a look at our race strategy sponsored by Verizon? 
Yeah, Mike, with stage one and stage two being 125 laps, you do not have to stop in those stages for fuel. You will have to stop between the stages. An option, as we just saw with a number of drivers with only running a few laps, right side tires for track position. And if you're not in a position to score stage points and the caution comes out late in stage one or stage two, pit, flip the stage, and then stay out at the stage end and get that track position. Thanks, Larry. Eric Jones dropping to the back. Uh, his pit crew had equipment interference on his stop. Uh, Bubba Wallace got two tires. I assume Chris Busher did for all the spots he gained on pit road. Uh, Busher, who started out back, will restart 18th here. Well, we're getting ready to find out what strategy is best, staying out two tires, four tires, and what this racetrack has in store for us today. And these boys, oh! Tyler Reddick, who did not stop, goes around, and we have Stacking up behind him. Two. Big time stack up here, guys. Yep, Corey LaJoy is in it, A.J. Allmendinger, Daniel Hemrick, Carson Hosevar, and more. Reddick trying to get refired. Yeah, we'll have to see the replay, but it looked like the, the four car gave the, the 45 car a pretty big shot because he just wasn't going in the middle of the corner. And I think a lot of that has to do with the tires. Yeah, clearly his tires didn't take off near as good. He seems slipping slow around. Bubba gets on his outside four, hit him once, hit him twice. That was a combination. Of, didn't have the real estate on the exit, had him uh, the four car on his left rear. Then Zane Smith hits him on the inside. Tyler Reddick gets turned around and they pile up in the back. In just two weeks, Pro Football returns on Fox as the UFL kicks off. Saturday, March 30th, the USFL champion Stallions take on the XFL champs, the Renegades. The kickoff weekend continues Sunday, March 31st on ESPN. Tyler Reddick completes repairs. He's back on track, two laps down, and back in the pits once again. Here's a list of who's involved. A.J. Allmendinger has gone a lap down, and William Byron gets the free pass. Jamie? Well, Mike, after that first round of stops, listening to the radio, drivers are talking about marbles. Chase Elliott said, I've never seen anything like it. These are marbles. Basically, think of the racetrack as a cheese grater. It's grating the rubber right off the tires, and the problem is when the tires pick it back up, it feels like they're driving on ice. So this is certainly something we're watching watching and listening to drivers are going to have to contend with it all race long. Chase Elliott and crew talked about just that. The marbles are making it wild. I've never seen anything like that here in my time. Yeah, come that. Well, you saw the graining on that tire too, yeah. Clint, and that that's really what makes the car ill handling. A lot of that is just uh, contributing to the difference between sticker tires and 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 the and the older tires, but the hard thing right here is going to be refiring with all that buildup on the tires. Today's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Now, as we line up for the restart, only two drivers in the top eight have four fresh tires, and they are Hamlin and Blaney in row three. Well, to all their credits, this is the first time we've ever put resin down on this racetrack. Last time it was a different traction compound. The resin is definitely different. Pace cars in. Bubba Wallace and Josh Berry to lead them back to green. Josh Berry is doing a great job on that inside. That is no uh, easy task there. Always the benefit goes to that outside of Bristol. He's holding his own pretty good on the bottom. Restarts. McDowell settles in third, then there's a gap back to this group. Fighting for fourth. Woo, very tight. Off of four, Josh Berry looking back underneath Bubba Wallace. Got him. I really, Man, his four car come to play today, boy. I really boys. like the speed of the four car through the, the center third of the corner. See him get up out of the groove right there. You just, if you're gonna run that bottom, you wanna keep that whole car in, in that resin down on the bottom of the racetrack, but. He's definitely got the lead. He's got the clean air. The thing that we saw in the run before this, the four car took off really good. 
The 12 car took off really good, and then after about 10 laps, here comes that 11. 11, Denny Hamlin eats him up. Watch the exit off of two over here. I saw him, when he gets back to the gas, boy, he really accelerates hard. See how wow. much he closed that gap? Thing is stuck up off the corners. Just exactly what you want. You want to put that throttle down and leave it down. And yeah, we see that that one groove up working really well. Look at these some of the good handling cars. And, and like you said, Clint, that car is amazing from for the exit of the corner. Denny Hamlin powers into third. And with his success at Bristol, Hamlin is today's guaranteed fifth. Sponsored by eBay Motors. Three Bristol wins, fourth or better in the last four short track races with a victory. 17 top tens and 33 starts here. As Blaney in tow, those are the first two cars and four tires. Josh Berry out front trying to become his high school graduating class's second most famous graduate. Who's the first, Mike? Taylor Swift. Oh, well, he's, well, he's, yeah, he's in trouble. He's definitely got no chance for first. <laughs> no, everybody's <laughs> racing for second. <laughs> but he is racing in the lead over uh, Bubba Wallace and Denny Hamlin. Micah McDowell trying to hold seventh against Kozlowski in Bristol, and Barry has a fight on his hands. It seems like that bottom really fires off good. And then all of a sudden, that outside line just above, it cleans up, and man, really takes off. Here's yeah. Denny to the outside of him. A little bit free into the corner, but all you have to do is get to there and position, take that exit away from him, and you're going to complete that pass pretty easy. All right, now the 11 and 12 are the only cars in this top eight with four fresh tires. Knowing what we know now, are nine sets of new tires going to be enough today? I don't know. It, this is going to be a telltale run if we can get some green flag runs here to see what the tires look like. But we heard a lot of the tires yesterday were worn all the way down to the cord. So uh, the lap times that we're seeing right now are way slower than they ran yesterday. Uh, the sun is out today and the resin is fresh on the bottom of the racetrack. I still think this racetrack is going to evolve as we go through the day, but very confusing for everybody right now, except for that 11 car. 11, hey, Blaney's right, right on him too. That's those four tires pouncing on Bubba Wallace. It's probably a matter of time, but uh, on a short run, I'm sold on these two tires. That's gonna be something all these crew chiefs are gonna have in the bag, right, in, in their, uh, the, their tool chest when it comes down to the end of this thing. If a caution comes out untimely, well, you say a that. lot of them to try that. You say that, and that four car is going backwards on those two tires, so I think a lot of it just depends on how your car is handling. It seems like um, Bubba's car is, is obviously handling a little bit better than than Josh Berry's after it runs 10, 15, 20 laps. Yeah, see here comes Hamlin laps. for the lead with four fresh tires and Blaney trying to follow through. Larry Mack. Yeah, what I learned this week talking to a number of crew chiefs, if you're going to go with just right side tires, you have to adjust the race car for it. You can't just throw the two rights on there. You have to make an adjustment that goes along with it. Well, I would think that would be an air pressure adjustment. Go, oh, hold on here. Bush is trying to get to the inside of Harrison Burton. Stacked them all up behind them. Now, he's not made a lot of progress since the restart. 17th was 18th. Kyle Larson also boxed in trying to make some moves behind Ty Gibbs. I think as we talked about today, this morning, Clint, this field was mixed up to start the race, and we knew that there was going to be a lot of comers and goers. And then you add that caution in and, and the, the high tire wear to, to start the race. It's definitely, definitely mixed things up. And, and the first run, Ryan Blaney wasn't as good as the 11 car, but as he's running this time, he's staying right with him and maybe maybe a little bit better right now. Yeah, very impressive, Ryan Blaney. I mean, he is, boys, well, got squirrely right there. When he turned back across that resin, called on the thing on the throttle and it got loose out from underneath of him but he is very fast through the center of the corner on that bottom and we talked Elliot looking at his outside yeah Elliot now third looking for second and Brad Keselowski up into the top five and then orange number six here comes Elliot on the high side Kyle Busch in the picture underneath uh, Bubba Wallace and the more those marbles stay built up on the outside of the racetrack the harder it's going to be to push this lane up to the top 
Elliott clears Blaney and goes right after the 11 of Hamlin for the lead. Guys, I am so intrigued by what is happening right now because you really cannot tell who's who's doing what. Like we, we thought Denny Hamlin was the guy that was going to take off and run, and now he's getting passed on the outside by Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott to the point. How about that? Where's our Elliott fans out there? Leading to Bristol. Sixty one of five hundred laps complete. Chase Elliott in the lead at Bristol. One caution, two cautions so far. The Food City 500 on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Built Ford Proud. And by Credit One Bank. Caution is out for Zane Smith, who uh, blew a tire on the front straightaway and the resulting debris. Now, Chase Elliott had gotten out front and led Hendrick Motorsports 80,000th lap in their NASCAR history. Then Kyle Busch, who restarted 16th, forged his way to the lead. And it's like whenever somebody can lead for about five laps, what do they make their tires angry? Because then they just get overhauled and the whole pack has stayed pretty much together with all the lead changes I, so far. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say because I don't know how to explain it, but We've seen side-by-side -side cars just go and all of a sudden just shut off and start going backwards. It has to have something to do with the graining of the front tires and the tire wear I of really tire all four wear, yeah. tires. So we'll have to see what happens when they take them off. But we're going to have three sets on 72 laps into this race. That's what's dangerous. Only nine sets out here. These guys are on the pit box. is hilarious. Scratching his hair. He might be out of here by the time this thing's over. But you said it, Mike. It really has congested the field in this tight racetrack, this half mile track. Usually 30 laps in, you're back the leaders on the same straightaway as the tail end of the field at Bristol Motor Speedway. Not even the chance. They're on top of one another. You could have thrown a blanket over the top 15. That is Eric Jones and I think that's uh, part of the 71 yeah. car on his hood. Got the Ford performance cam here on Joey Logano's car, and his car has been absolutely horrendous. All right, pit road will be open this time. Well, after what I saw with those two tires and stuff like that, Josh Berry lost a lot of ground. I'm putting four tires on this thing, Kevin. Give me four. I'm with you, and that's, as a driver, that's what I always wanted was four tires. Regan? Well, Kyle Busch up 15 spots since the restart, and what the field doesn't want to hear, he reports to his team, the balance is really good. He's happy with his car at this moment. In the five car, Kyle Larson, really good right now. The biggest concern is he's got to do a better job navigating better through the traffic that we see on the racetrack right now. Jamie? 73 laps in, and these teams are coming in for their second set of sticker tires. The 11 of Denny Hamlin super tight into the corner, but as he moved up, it got better. The 12 of Ryan Blaney ran pretty hard there, he said. Needed to turn just a little bit better, but no big complaints from either two of these drivers. All cars, remember, under caution at the end of the pits at turn two and come all the way around both pit roads, exiting at turn one. Brian Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, and there's the race off pit road. Still some pit crew challenges for that eight car, Kyle Busch. Well, they made another change this week. They had the original jack van back. They moved the front tire changer to the rear, got a different front tire changer, and just lost three spots. Nineteen sixty one is when they started racing in Thunder Valley. These scenes from nineteen sixty five. Wow. Were you there, Mike? No, I wasn't. I was in high school in Connecticut, but I guess I just wish I'd been there at the time. <laughs> I wish I'd have been there. <laughs> Me too. Regan. Well, Mike, we talk about cords and what these tires are doing right here is the right front off of Joey Logano's car. This is what Ooh. we mean when we talk about cords. The rubber completely gone on this tire. He was tight before this started. It got tighter after. Woo. Aye, aye, aye. Larry, that's a, that's a bit excessive. 
Yes, it is, Clint. And I'd like to sit here and tell you it's going to get better, but I am very, very concerned. The biggest thing I'm concerned about is what we're seeing and the number of tires we got sitting in our pits. Well, in last fall's race here, there were only 10 lead changes in the whole race. We've had more lead changes in the first 70 here than in any race on concrete in Bristol history. Wow. We're back under green, Denny Hamlin out in front of Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott on the outside. Kyle Busch drops low in fourth. All these teams have reported to their drivers what the situation is with their tires. So in Joey Logano's situation, you know, that car looks like it has too much camber and it's obviously tight and hard on the right front tire. So he's got to make some adjustments as a driver. There's obviously not a lot you can do here because it's Bristol and you just have to go as hard as you can through the center of the corner. So it's a tough, tough situation to manage. All right, here's some Chase Elliott radio. Elliott riding in third. What are your volts now? Point eight. Well, well, that's not going to last long. No, not with uh, I mean, 400 it, laps to yeah, go. I mean, it's it's it might last a you know 150, 200 laps, but it's not going to make the whole race if it if it if it's not charging the battery at all. Plenty of the pass on Hamlin. Man, when he made a pass, didn't he try to get back in line? And that thing took a set. Thought it was going to come around on him. Well, and I just wonder, Clint, if Denny is just sitting there trying to be as easy as possible, find a space to be able to, to save those tires and knows the situation. Chris Buescher has made it up into the top 10. Now, here's a guy who started 34th, uh, gained a whole bunch of spots by taking two tires on the early caution flag, but he's worked hard for a top 10 spot. Got it. Ty Gibbs just went by him uh, to take that back, but he's with the lead pack and battling. Here's the RFK crew. Well, we knew Chris Buescher would be in the mix here. He was great in the fall, him and Brad Keselowski both. Third place. Well, when you have, and you call it a situation, when you have situations like this, I look for experience. And look at the experience up front. Blaney, last year's champion. Denny, many, many years of experience. This eight car, Kyle Busch, many time winner here at Bristol. That nine car, champion. Brad Keselowski behind him, champion. Kyle Busch was runner-up in last night's truck race. The surprise was he di didn't win it. Uh, Christian Eckes took it to him, passed him under green, and uh, held him off for the victory. Here we see Denny Hamlin go back around the outside of Ryan Blaney. Fifteen lead changes already. The race record is 40. Set in the spring of 91. Look at the marbles up on top of that racetrack. That's all that tire. Jamie said it. It's like a cheese grater out here on these things. Well, Busher's fallen back a bit to battle with Nemechek and Bowman, 11th, 12th, 13th here. Clint, what do you think the best strategy is to, to save tires? I mean, is it in the resin? Is it above the resin? I, because I don't really know. Well, here's what I'm going to say. Save tires or whatever. Tire wear always puts on better racing. We have massive tire wear, and look at the difference of a product we've seen here today at Bristol already 90 laps into this thing. Tire wear is king. Three to go in stage one. We're going to take you Fox side by side at Bristol. The Bush Guide, cold and smooth survival skills. Hello? Should you become stranded, be ready to signal rescuers. Bush. <gasps> How long have I been out here? About 12 minutes. Head for the mountains. You give, you give, and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. 
You get unlimited data. You get America's most reliable 5G network. You get a Samsung Galaxy A15 for only $99, so you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Good talk. Turn your tax refund into a U-Fund. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. Now we get ready to rumble in Richmond. Virginia is for lovers. Of a return to racing under the bright lights. It's a night race with people are jacked up. Of a rocking infield experience that offers unparalleled access to your favorite NASCAR drivers. Oh, of a spring weekend full of friends, family, and electric short track action you'll never forget. Has won here at NASCAR Weekend at Richmond Raceway. Get your tickets now at richmondraceway.com. Inez, let me ask you. You're using head and shoulders, right? Only when I see flakes. Then I switch back to my regular shampoo. You should use it every wash. Otherwise, the flakes will come back. He's right, you know. Is that Tiny Troy? The ingredients in head and shoulders keep the microbes that cause flakes that big. Microbes? Really? They're always on your scalp. Little rascals. But good news. There's no itchiness, dryness, or flakes down here. I love Tiny Troy and his tiny, gorgeous hair. He's the best. Make every wash count. Little help, please. Did you see that? Hear that? Feel that? Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready? At Cracker Barrel, we've got 20 meals under $12. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And ooh, all new Golden Carolina barbecue tenders. So stop in, dig in. And now, earn Cracker Barrel rewards. Hamlin the leader, Bush second, Blaney third. This is fourth on back, Elliott, Bell, and Keselowski. 103 laps complete. Slider Sunday on Keselowski's quarter panel. They're sliding around this baby at Bristol. And Ty Gibbs keeps marching toward the front. Boom! Or that. Yeah. That's the Bristol stomp right there. Yeah, he had a lot of momentum, and he thought Christopher Bell was going to leave him lane, and he didn't. Are you sure that's what you saw? I think Bell moved up and he voiced his displeasure oh, on the bumper of his yeah. race car. We used to call it the chrome horn, but <laughs> those bumpers aren't chrome anymore. All right, so Josh Berry, you know who he's battling to be the second most famous person in his graduating class? Taylor Swift. It, no, no, she's first. IndyCar star Joseph Newgarden. They all went to high school. Together. They all went to the yes, high school did. together. Yeah. And they let Kelsey take off with it. Well, I don't know. Yes, you do. He's dating Taylor Swift. Oh, trust me. I know. I, my, <laughs> my, my little girl Piper at home informs me daily that that's the only football player she knows. Ty Gibbs trying to take fifth from Chase Elliott. Couldn't get the job done in that corner, but didn't work on the bottom. Let's try the top. Well, he's got that second lane rolling in pretty good. Especially off turn two. And Josh Berry has been up and against the wall. Oh, no. We have a tire down. Yeah. Kyle Busch hunting the lead. We see both of these guys in that second lane. Denny Hamlin has been in that second lane the whole time. Kyle Busch will dip down into the bottom when he needs to, but... I'm still curious as to which lane is going to be the best for tire savings as, as we heard Regan tell us all the tires were wore out down to the cords and they're graining really bad on their on their way to to the cords. And as soon as they're wearing out to these cords you can just see it. I mean it's instantaneous. They start slipping sliding around and headed to the back. Yeah the lap times just immediately start slowing down into the 17 second bracket. Well Xfinity looked past his lap last time by. Uh, let's have a look at it. Kyle Busch the quickest. Chris Busher trying to get to the front. Denny Hamlin trying to hold the lead. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek back in 12th. And Alex Bowman currently 10th. You come to Bristol to watch a race, whether you're a broadcaster, a fan, a cameraman, a director. You're, you leave here, it's like your head's been on a, a swivel for uh, three and a half hours. This is the most interesting start to Bristol Motor Speedway I've ever seen. Whether I was racing in it or calling these races, this is by far the best start to a race I've ever seen. It's Bubba Wallace way off the pace in the exit of four. 
Got up in the marbles. Yeah, I think that's half of it. You get moved up into those marbles, it's going to take you two or three laps to get them cleaned back up. I'm talking massive marbles. How about Chase Briscoe, who has slipped back now to 15th place? We listened in. I told him to stay out of the resin, but I don't know what the hell's right. The 41 tires looked the worst, and he ran up top the most. So a lot of different information we're getting. Talking about his teammate, uh, Ryan Priest. Well, and that's where we are up in the booth. We don't we don't know if it's better in the booth. There's eight cars off the pace. From second, big time problem, Regan. Like two laps ago, he came on the radio, said the right rear is gone completely. His spotter, Derek, Derek Nealon, also just trying to give him updates on where to run. Nobody knows where to run right now. Nowhere to hide. Well, it's wearing those tires out. All right, crew chief, I need help. Where can I run on this racetrack that saves these tires? the most well, I don't know this resin is obviously throwing them for a root we loop. saw we saw Denny Hamlin just run in one line and we saw Kyle go up the hill pull his car down I, I just think you need to have as as little as possible lane changing and, and pulling the car around and backing off to, to try to save the tires but he's in big trouble trying to ride it out to the next caution and try to not be the next caution yeah, you just have to nurse this thing around there. Seven more laps, Kyle. You could see how slow and off the pace he is. Blaney going for the lead on Hamlin. As we get toward the end of stage one, he's got it. But look at Ty Gibbs has climbed all the way to second place. Man, it doesn't stop there. They are really stacking up behind them. You're talking Gibbs six to the lead. seven of all of them right here in a row. You could throw a blanket over them. Yeah, and this is all who's, whose car is not wearing the tires the most and who can who can keep the tires on the cars. We see Austin Sindrick have probably have the same problem that we're talking about with Kyle Busch. He's got something that's just completely wore out and just nursing it to the end of this stage. Ty Gibbs, the driver with the best average finish this season, last year's Rookie of the Year, and Kyle Larson have powered past Ryan Blaney to take over spots one and two with four to go in stage one. Can he keep these tires underneath of him? Did he save enough? Man, there is a lot of cars. Christopher Bell off a of four. He is in big trouble. It seems like the Gibbs cars are really having trouble right here in the tail, uh, trailing laps of this. When you drive this car, it will just, when the tire, right rear tire shuts off and it is instantaneous and all of a sudden you just can't drive it anymore and you just have to almost stop to make the car go around the racetrack. Busher takes third from Keselowski. Danny Hamlin in a wall off of three. It turned three. And a spin in turn there two, it and it's Kyle Busch. And it's down. The right rear's finally blew out on him. I don't think well, he's the only one. Denny Hamlin was in three. trouble getting into three. We're going to go Kyle backwards. Busch becomes the next caution at lap 123. Check this out, Kevin. Slowly pull down. They'll start splitting to the top here. Well, he's going backwards, losing as little, little uh, space as possible. He is on one lap down, trying to keep from going another. Yeah. Here comes the 11 to turn three. You can see his right rear down. He was in trouble. William Byron gets into him, tags the wall just a little bit. Unbelievable tire wear we're seeing. Now, that was not the caution. Hamlin getting into the wall in three. No, it was the other flat tire. <laughs> Kyle Busch in two. Kyle Busch going around in turn two is the reason for the... Look, there's no tire left. Yeah, on that right rear. It's just wearing through all the tread down through the cords, and finally it just, you know, blows air out the cords. Ty Gibbs is going to get his first career stage win in the NASCAR Cup Series. Made a methodical march through the field, took care of his tires, and he is the leader at Bristol at the end of stage one. Ty Gibbs wins stage one, an eventful 125 laps that saw four caution flags and 16 lead changes. Here's Jamie Little. Well, Ryan Blaney's team is off to a fast start. After four races this season, they have the best four tire stop average. So let's go ahead and meet the defending series champions. Ryan Flores, Manasquan, New Jersey, front tire changer, 
defending Cup Series champion and more handsome host of the Stack and Pennies podcast. Zach Price, rear tire changer, Taylor's from North Carolina, dad to Maxton in Denver, two-time NASCAR Cup champion. Trevor Apsey, Empire, Michigan, third-year tire carrier, former linebacker at Central Michigan University. My name is Jordan Osinski. I'm from Snow Camp, North Carolina. Uh, I'm a Jackman, and last season was my first full season in the Cup Series, and we happen to be champions by the end of the year. Chris Conklin, Fueler, Snow Camp, North Carolina. Uh, four-time Xfinity champion, uh, defending 2023 Cup champion, started in the sport as a Jackman, been a fueler since 2019. Studs. Yep, there they are, the series champs. For Team Penske and Ryan Blaney. Now, right at the end of the stage, Ryan Blaney got up and into the wall. Here were his comments. Excuse me, uh, Denny Hamlin up and into the wall. Uh, yeah, I tried to do all I could there without wrecking. Wrecked anyway. Yeah, I come forward to eight. I, I mean, obviously, I had the same issue, so doesn't pay to lead and or run in the gray, I guess. Who knows? I just wonder if this is going to turn into, in the Cars Tour, we see a lot of tire conservation races where the guys will intentionally save. I just wonder if you slowed the pace down a bunch to, to try to save the tire, if that, that would even work. Well, that's where we started when I started in the sport. That's what you, you definitely did that. Tony Stewart was really good at it. Regan? Ty Gibbs doing a great job keeping his tires where they needed to be. His crew chief, Chris Gale, very pointed in his comments said, tell me exactly which end slips worse because that's which end we need to be concerned with. A little bit loose end for his car. That's what they worked on. Kyle Larson, the right part front came apart at the end of that run for him. Lots of question marks on the radio. Jamie. Brad Keselowski with a really strong Ford. He said, anything you could do to help that right front last longer, that's all I need. You see him making a four-tire stop there. The 42, John Hunter Nemechek started back in 26 great run for him a wedge adjustment and four tires to be close this race off pit road Larson and Gibbs, Gibbs Keslowski Blaney Nemechek and Busher tire wear is the topic on the high banks of Bristol Wow Your home for Saturday baseball is MLB on Fox. The biggest stars and teams square off in the biggest games on the best day of the week. Fox Saturday baseball returns March 30th. We're at the end of stage number one, and tire wear is the topic for everybody in the field have that's Ryan Blaney's right front everybody in the field having one issue or other and perhaps some teams anticipated this we were allowed to listen in on the pre-race crew meeting for Noah Gregson's team all right guys uh, 125 first stage we can go like 190 on gas tire wear is an issue there is more fall off than there has been with with resin versus PJ1 so we go 50 laps on your right front tire it happens fast here. Uh, things things go by really quick, even adjustment wise. Phoenix and in Vegas, it's just a pit stop, so retaining, and then you just inch your way forward. You get done a good job. So, all right, guys, let's have a good day. Get up. Brakes are currently one lap back. Um, had a safety violation on their last pit stop, and another one on this pit stop. Uh, too many men over the wall for Zane Smith. Let's check with Regan. Well, Mike, you showed some tires earlier that looked really bad. Up and down pit road, I checked every pit box on this end of pit road. These were the best looking tires. These are the tires off of Kyle Larson's car. Cliff Daniels radioed his driver and told him they actually look better than he anticipated at the end of that run. Kyle Larson right now asking him what lap times he needs to run early on so he can keep saving those tires. That's exactly what I wanted to hear out of somebody's mouth. Kyle Larson, all right, I'm going to back this thing up. I'm going to put it in my hands. I'm going to save you some rubber on these tires for the end. And you better be managing these tires because this run, folks, is 12 laps longer than what we just saw. Well, you're going to have to back the pace down at the beginning of the run to, to keep some rubber on those tires. But um, you, you just don't want to be you don't want to be the guy that causes the caution like the eight was right there. The, the 11 had the, the same problem, but he wasn't the cause of the caution and, and was able to to keep himself uh, on, on the lead lap. So you just don't want to be the first one that has the has the, the most uh, issue and blows the tire out. So we will restart for stage two with 27 lead lap cars plus Bubba Wallace, the free pass car. 
There's a look at Bristol from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Jamie? Well, Mike, I just walked over to check in with Goodyear, and they are mounting tires right now. I just talked to Greg Stucker with Goodyear. He said, we have enough for each team to have a set. That's 144 tires. We're just waiting for good for NASCAR to give Goodyear the green light that these teams can come over and get a set, but they want to be prepared, so they're working on it now. They've been doing it for about 10 minutes. We'll get you a shot here momentarily, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> Look at that tire. Boy, That's a busy place, it. you know. Those tire busters are uh, among the hardest working people at the racetrack on any given weekend. Uh, same for our Fox cameraman. That's Brad Hutton with the quick hustle over there to get a shot of Goodyear. Jake Blau as well. And uh, Dave Stolen, Stoley as well, getting you these shots. 50 laps his way, 50 laps my way. I want to say hello to one of our former Fox uh, crew members on both the NFL and NASCAR. Mike Stiefback operated the scoring pylon graphic and the ticker for the first 20 years of our NASCAR coverage on Fox. Uh, Mike up in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, where he is the unofficial mayor, at least everybody with Fox, has been battling cancer and uh, want to wish Mike Stiefback well in his journey and in his recovery. Now the lights out on the safety car with Kyle Larson and Brad Keselowski on the front row. Ty Gibbs, Ryan Blaney, John Hunter Nemechek, Chris Buescher, Josh Berry, Christopher Bell, Martin Truex, Ryan Priest. The top ten. What will stage two give us? Uh, the sun back out, flirting with uh, these big heavy clouds. In and out, sunshine on the track, resin in the track, marbles all over the track. Pace car is in, and here we go. Ty Gibbs looking to the outside of Kyle Larson for the lead off the two. Well, I think Kyle Larson is just in that tire conservation mode. I think he's he's going to listen to Cliff Daniels and just back his pace off and try to save his tires. And Ty Gibbs just took off there and passed him. This well, restart strings out a lot more than any prior restart. It's like not a lot of people rushing to the front. I think you're exactly right. And, and you listen to the radio. I looked over. Uh, Cliff Daniels told Kyle Larson about a 1670. I think it'll be plenty. That'll be some reserve for the end of this race. Let them go. If they want to take off. I remember Martinsville. My first race in Martinsville. Tony Stewart passing blew his doors off. Kevin put a straightaway on and thought ha, he ain't so bad after all. I was a lap down by the end of that run. Well, that's what's going to happen right here. If you don't save your tires and pace yourself, uh, and you can see at the front of the pack, this is just like a late model stock race at, at a worn out racetrack. These guys are checking up the pace. They're side by side. Josh Berry won at the one of Whoa. the very best at, at late model stock racing in this country. Um, going to try to position in himself, and I wouldn't be surprised if he just tries to back up and run the pace of the leader now that he's got his track position. Shot that gap. I think that's the key. You know, if I can get to the lead like Ty Gibbs, now I want to back it up. Yeah, and that lap right there, you can already see Josh Berry ran a 16.5 on the last lap, backed up to 16.70. Now he's just content to ride right there. Martin Truex is not content. He wants the lead from his Joe Gibbs Toyota teammate and takes it. And he's not even going to pressure him. Nope. Ty Gibbs is not going to pressure him at all because he wants to run that pace. He's got the track position that he's happy with. And these guys are going to start pacing themselves to try to make these tires last longer. Well, that's where you got to discipline yourself behind this wheel. It's going to be easy to get to that lead. All right, if I can get to the lead, then I'm going to back up. Well, you start backing up, now I'm going to get greedy. Some other guy is. Don't get enticed into that. Stay on the plane. Stay managing these tires. Truex becomes the 10th different leader today. 20 lead changes so far. As Christopher Bell battles Josh Berry for fourth. Ooh. Inches apart. Careful. Less Josh. than an inch. 
Well, we saw them run, and, and you're going to see Ty Gibbs go on the outside right here for the lead, and he's like, okay, I'm going to go back up front and take the lead, and I'm going to I'm going to set the pace again. And every time somebody gets the lead, it's they they check that pace up in order to try to get their cars to where they uh, are in the right track position, and then try to set the pace. Race pace has fallen off about seven tenths of a second from where we were at this stage on the last green flag run, and. Uh, the four Gibbs cars are in four of the top five spots. Yeah, that's management. They can take off, and you can see it at will. If you want to go lead this race, have at it. But you're going to wish you didn't here in about 30 laps. A second difference from this takeoff of this run versus the last. All intentional. Nothing to do with the racetrack, the cars, the tires, all by choice from the teams and the drivers. And now it's now there's a huge game of strategy and, a, you know, a game of chicken that's that's going to happen with all this jockeying back and forth to see who wants to set the pace and who wants to get out there and, and, and make up track position as they get behind. And that's what Joey Logano is doing. We, we noted earlier that he was struggling with his car and his right front tire was one of the first ones we shaw, showed with cords on it. And he's like, hey, this is a good opportunity and maybe playing into, into something that I can do better than I could do when everybody was trying to go. There are several science projects uh, going on here. I've noticed several cars that since the restart have not strayed off the bottom of the track at all and others like Kyle Busch who have not been to the bottom running every single lap up top trying to figure out where is the tire where going to be the best. Well the biggest thing that I've noticed is because of the pace and, and lack thereof because they're managing this thing kind of like a horse race holding that horse back till you come off the floor. You don't have to worry about being the tail end of this thing and worry about going a lap down. These guys are all right there on top of one another. Yeah well this is no horse race Clint. This is like uh, every late model stock race in the southeast. <laughs> Well, Kyle Larson got it done. 80,000 career laps led in the Cup Series for Hendrick Motorsports. 29 drivers have led at least a lap. 35 different racetracks. And every season that they've been in the Cup Series, they've led 240 laps or more. Comes Ty Gibbs back to the front. Be careful of that rookie driver. He ain't a rookie anymore, but he's still pretty fresh. Don't be enticed by these guys to go out there and lead every lap. Get yourself in trouble by wearing these tires out. Danny Hamlin's tired of following. I want back up there. And we've been on this constant mission to try to get to a point where the tires completely wear out in Cup Series racing. Today it's it's a bit extreme, and, and now you're seeing other cars, all these cars, set a pace to try to keep the tires on the car. And I'd much rather see it in the drivers and team's hand to do that. I would absolutely rather watch, rather watch a race like this than a qualifying lap, lap after lap after lap. Tire wear is always better racing. 24th lead change of the day as Denny Hamlin puts his Toyota back out front in front of Larson, Gibbs, Bell, and Truex. The Food City 500 on Fox is sponsored by Wendy's Classic Hamburgers and by Ace 100 Years of Helpful. I don't know, Kevin. You know, Darrell Waltrip won a dozen races here, but I think your highlight reel at Bristol is about as long as his. Or well, were they highlights? Well, I think they're for the wrong reasons, okay. but... Uh, yeah, they, I've had some intense moments here for sure. <laughs> I love it. I, I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. I well, love what I'm seeing right now. I this love has been a wild this one. management of what we're seeing these guys have to overcome today. 28 lead changes. Now, as we went to break, Denny Hamlin got right up and alongside Ty Gibbs for the lead. And kind of like two tractor trailers on the interstate, fighting their way up a hill, holding traffic back behind them. That's what they did for four or five laps together, just trying to control the pace of this race. Yeah, and everybody has the opportunity to, to do what they need to do. To, if they want to move forward, they can take that risk of putting more wear on their tires. But you have to get yourself to a certain point in, in these runs to make the tires last. And the only way to do that is to is to back the pace down. And they're going to get to the same point. It's just going to take a little bit longer. And uh, what does Ty Gibbs think of all this? So I said, Larson's a, Larson's a good judge there. He rode with us the whole time. The last time, Denny blasted out front and blew his stuff off and faded. So 
Larson's your judge. Two. Well, Ty Gibbs had the, had the best car at the end of the last stage, so he's in a crash. Oh. Turn four. Daniel Hemrick up and against the wall. Zane Smith with him, and Ricky Stenhouse put us under caution. This all started down the back stretch. See what we can come up with. The, uh, yeah. We're done. Dang it. Well, that's the ballpark buns and rolls cam as Stenhouse tries to roll his way back to pit road. A little uh, weeble wobble going on there. Three cars involved, but as you said, it was a big stack up, up in turn three that led to that in turn four. Yeah, I think it actually started off at turn two and they stacked up down the, down the back straightaway and then it just mixed everything up. I think you're seeing them off the two here. They start stacking up around Zane Smith, checking up in front of them as well. And then oh. Stenhouse gets into McDowell there, slides up into, well, he bounces off another one. I think he had some damage yeah. in front of his car from what happened in turn two and the rest is history. Another caution. I don't think that was on purpose. I think his front end was off. Shot him all over the place. He was along for the ride. Well, let's go way back. And yeah. uh, John Hunter Nemechek was trying to race his way forward on the outside, came down there on Joey Logano, and look at this stack up. That's exactly what led to the stack up. I saw that first, and then they wrecked back here prior uh, behind them. Were Nemechek and Logano just continuing from last week? I would stay away from Logano if I was Nemechek. He will bite back. Well, here we go again. We're going to have to pit for another set of tires. They got through, well, let's see, we went 52 of the 100, 125 that have done. Track sweepers out, working both ends of the racetrack. Once again. Twenty eight cars on the lead lap, including Stenhouse, who may need lengthy repair. Uh, Zane Smith has come to pit road early. Kevin, can they get the marbles cleaned up enough on this outside with these cautions? I see two sweep trucks out there trying to clean all these marbles up. Do you think they can get it cleaned up enough where a guy like Larson and a, a get up there and run and burn in that outside line like we know that is there and exists? I just don't think so. I, I think that with the way that they're having to pace themselves, I think that, um, you know, that it's going to come down to who can have the best handling car to keep the tires underneath the car as long as possible. So balanced, it, it's going to have to, it's going to be a balanced race car. I just, I don't think you're going to get up the racetrack today all the way to the top. Well, we completed the West Coast swing two races this year. And there are your winners out in the West, including Tyler Reddick, who earned the most points of anyone. And Brad Kozlowski and Noah Gregson turned their seasons around to the positive in the West. Bush, Sindrick, and Wallace, not so lucky. Looking for a win, Logano, Austin. Remember, Priest had that penalty to put him way behind, as did Noah Gregson. You know, Logano started up front, started fourth there in this race and just marched his way steadily straight to the back. But all these cautions, all these problematic situations for these teams has enabled him to make some adjustments on that car, get himself back up inside the top 10. And there's a sense of survival to this one. 100%. You're, you're going you're gonna to have some, you're going to have several more casualties and the way that this race has progressed and these guys have adjusted and adapted to what they need to do uh, with saving the tires. We're going to see these cars stacked up uh, side by side with each other for a whole bunch of laps as we go forward. Well, and I do love the fact that come stage in, they have the ability to go when it's ready and to the end of this race. Well, we've been super speedway, intermediate, short track, and we're going road racing. Next Sunday on Fox in Texas, the twists and turns of Circuit of the Americas. Free race at 3 Eastern, engines fire at 3.30. Sunday on Fox.
That is a long and winding road. There's the track map of Coda. Now, compared to the short tracks, all right, let's take the length of Bristol, five-eighths of a mile. Let's add the three-quarters of a mile of Richmond, including the paperclip turn. There's Martinsville. You add those three tracks together, and you're almost halfway well, around there. Coda. There you go. That's a it's a it's a long lap. Cool racetrack. Can't wait. Regan. Mike Kevin mentioned wanting to have a well-balanced race car for this to be good today. That's exactly what Ty Gibbs has right now. Wants to be just a touch freer, but he likes where it's at for that last run. And the four car of Josh Berry right now starts off too tight, builds too loose. He doesn't want to free it up because he's afraid it's going to be too loose by the time he gets to the end of the tire run. Jamie? Brad Kozlowski, three-time winner here at Bristol, continues his solid run. He said, we're not any worse that run. They'll put four tires on it. Meanwhile, the 19 of Martin Truex Jr., I need rear grip, he says. Feels like they wore the rears out worse that time. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment and four tires. Thanks, Jamie. I'll be interested in some of the science projects. We mentioned Kyle Busch never went to the bottom of the racetrack on that run. Some other drivers never ventured up top. We'll see what maybe they learned uh, about their tires. Chris Buescher wins the race off pit road, takes on four tires, and jumps up four positions. Bandit flight team for the flyover today. And trouble for Ty Gibbs on pit road. Uh, beginning with the right front tire that comes off his car will roll away out of their pit box. Here's a look at it. And that causes one of the behind the wall guys to drop over the wall to try to retrieve it. And then as he leaves, Either the Jackman or tire changer got upended. And now he is back in. Regan. Well, Mike, when things happen quick like they are today, you got to make strategy plays. That's what Chris Gale is doing right now. He is using up his scuff set. Since they're going to be in the back, he said, go ahead and pit right now. We're going to use up the scuff tires so we don't use up the stickers that we think we're going to want later on in the race. Great play by him since they had the penalty. Well, this is a this is a, a tire saving strategy race and those moves like that are the ones that you have to make in order to win these types of races to have the best tires at the end of this race or the most tires at the end of this race so you know how many sets of tires you have you know what you're dealing with uh, this is a this is a different style race but a lot of these guys have run these styles of race coming up through the ranks I, I know I keep going back to the late model stock days but this is how Ty Gibbs, uh, who, who we think has the best car and knows how to play this game. Uh, some of these dirt racers, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, they know how to save those tires too. So this is this has got a, a high level of interest um, of, of how the strategy is going to play out and who's going to do it the best. All right, Chris Busher, who took just two tires, he and Christopher Bell on the front row. Here's your progressive race summary. 30 lead changes already. 11 different leaders and 28 cars on the lead lap, including Harrison Burton, who gets the free pass. Larry Mack. Yeah, Mike, I've been running the numbers, and you know, NASCAR may release a set of tires to these teams, but we know we have 10 sets, including those qualifiers. We can't dictate cautions like what we just had, but that first run up until the point that the 71 had an issue, that was basically 31 laps. And then when Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin had an issue, it's 47 laps. The only way these numbers work, we're going to have to get to a point where we run about 50 laps per run. Again, that's not factoring in the cautions. You're spot on, Larry. If they can't get any farther than that, I don't care if they get another set of tires, they're still going to be in trouble. All right, you should, we're back to green. You saw Ricky Stenhouse back out on track after that caution. He is three laps down. Chris Buescher. How about this? Two tires and the lead. Started right. in the trunk. All right, so here, here you go. Position yourself. Try to get to the front of the pack and then see who wants to play along and, and set the pace as to what what they think their pace needs to be compared to what your crew is telling you what your pace needs to be pull the reins back you got to pull the reins back and these guys are going at it pretty hard up front 
Busher is the race's 12th different leader. Will Christopher Bell be the 13th? Well, that's as fast as we've seen. They, they definitely ran faster taking off this run than, than they did the last run. Yeah, by a good bit, too, Kevin. We're told Todd Gilliland in seven also took two tires on that stop. I think Bell settled in there in second. He looked like he was going to go up and give him a race there for the lead, Busher, but uh, I think they've just settled in. And oh, we got, no, nope. we got a player. Teams. John Hunter Nemechek, just as in the last green flag run, he is on the move. Well, I can promise you he's going to go to the front. He might not stay there, but if it's on the table, I'm going to go lead me a lap. And every time these guys do this, they're going to get more and more knowledge about what their tires look like, what their pace was, and, and that may be why they, they decided to, to pick up the pace some. But uh, that pace is, is slowly going to creep back towards the low 17-second bracket. And everybody in the field knows what their car's issue is and, and what they've been working on, to when, whether it's the right front tire or the right rear tire they need to save. Well, by this point, everybody's been told several times, listen to me, make sure that we get green flag runs. We need this thing to go green for a long time here. We cannot keep throwing tires on these things. We're going to be out. Seventh place here. With Barry and Gilliland. And Josh Berry prevails. We're slowing down so much, I actually heard some cars shifting. Yeah, it sounded it sounded like Joey Logano may have been shifting right there. He was earlier too. Here's a Josh Berry and crew talking tires. Yet. At least everybody won't be in here tight. Gotta look at the positive. Well, there's that. Um, NASCAR VP Elton Sawyer came over to the booth and said uh, that they will release one extra set of tires to each team uh, once Goodyear has all those tires mounted. But he said that's it. That's all the tires there are available. Uh, are one extra set NASCAR making the decision early in the race to allow an extra set of tires to help the teams plan their race strategy. Whoa, hold on to it Suarez. Yeah, it's like they got stuck together and he couldn't get off the side of him. Got loose underneath of him. It just, yeah, as you said, needed that real estate and it wasn't there. And Justin Haley gets away. Settles in. They need in to settle lane. in. You said it. Settle in here and get these green flag stops. I just was talking about green flag runs. If you don't, even one more set might not be enough. Now here's Logano trying the high side. And he clears Busher. That's for fifth place. Yeah, and when the story's really going to start to tell itself is when we get 30 or so laps into this run to see whose cars start falling off, even though that, that the pace is, is slowed down because you can you can save the most tires at the beginning of the run. You can do the least amount of stress at the beginning of the run, but we see Ty Gibbs, he, he's got the fastest car and, and seems like the best car on, on the tires. And he's decided that he's gonna go and, and push the pace until he gets the track position that he needs and, and suffer the consequences at the end of this run in order to get his track position back that he lost on pit road. He restarted 28th. Well, that's the only thing he's got to his expense right here. Hey, we might as well go and try to pounce on him, get up there, and then try to slow down, and we'll, we'll deal with that when we get there, but we need to get our track position back. What Kyle Larson, Larry points out, is the only Chevrolet in the top 15, along with uh, five Toyotas and nine Fords. Has Grala in the top 10. 
He had a difficult practice session, had trouble finding the bottom of the racetrack, but they got him squared away for qualifying, and he's having a good run here. Yeah, and the hardest thing to do is what uh, Kaz is doing a great job, but what Josh Berry just did, he, he just had to, he's setting his pace and said, this is as fast as I'm going to run. Go ahead, Kaz, and, and go on by. I don't want to go any faster right now to save my tires. Christopher Bell, Martin. The Food City 500 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Credit One Bank. 32 laps to go in stage two. Eric Jones, Austin oh, Dillon, Carson Hosevar, contact. The Advent Health Cam on board Eric Jones. In 25th after overcoming a pit road penalty earlier. Now Christopher Bell trying to go two in a row after he won Phoenix and went into the media center for the winner's debrief. He and Bob Pachras had it out. Christopher Bell, NASCAR driver. Did you pick me today? No, I didn't. <laughs> I did not pick you. Bob's picks are notoriously the worst. Yeah. If he picks you, or at least me, if he picks me, I don't win. Yeah, I so, picked you last week. I know, I know, and I <laughs> sucked. <laughs> so that was all you last week. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll own it, yeah. Well, you picked me, so you jinxed me. But all right, well. Don't pick me next week, Bob. <laughs> Bob Pachris is our Fox NASCAR insider. We certainly appreciate his hard work. And, uh, oh, by the way, Christopher, Bob picked Ryan Blaney this week to win. That's as loose as I've ever seen Christopher Bell. He is loose behind the wheel, no pressure, getting the job done, taking care of business. Ty Gibbs, you know, we're talking during the break. How far forward in this run do he does he need to get before he's comfortable? Well, he's up to fourth, and it looks like he is not letting off at all he wants to get all the way back to the lead well it's on the table right and i think it's on the table for a lot of these drivers but you saw me circle it still 25 laps to go we need to make sure that he keeps these tires underneath of it and finishes this thing well when we got to the end of the of the first stage and everybody was going as hard as they could go he had by far the best car that seemed to be the easiest on the tires and wound up winning stage one now he's come all the way from the back all the way back to third place so we'll see how much he's got left after after he's had to be a little harder on his tires than he wants to be Gibbs restarted 28th and around goes Kyle Busch in turn two caution waves now remember Bush had been running up the racetrack ever since he had that uh, flat tire that brought out the caution back at lap 123 Stepped out from underneath of him. Wait, win all by himself. I see the tires still up. Yeah, we saw so many guys have trouble with that in qualifying yesterday. They'd run one hard lap in, and then uh, the second lap into into turn three it would just slide out from underneath them as they as they go off into the corner. That looked there's like an, what happened. There's another set of tires for these guys. These crew chiefs were hoping that we can make it to the stage end here. Ricky Stenhouse's ballpark view here. Yeah, and that spin out actually happened into turn one, not turn three. Same same scenario, though. Just the back just gets light and steps out on you. Kyle was running 31st, one lap down. And he and Austin Sendrick had been racing pretty hard together. Sendrick will get the free pass. That's what they were battling for was the free pass position. Uh, no contact. Single car spin. So we are 21 laps from the stage end. Here's some audio from Kyle Busch. After four laps, I'm plowing tight, so I don't even know what to tell you. Hey, look, last year I went five laps down here, running as hard as I could go. The, the car didn't do anything that we expected to, it to do. Always a great racetrack for us. Same thing for Kyle Busch. Always a great racetrack for them. Um, went to the start of the race and everything went went pretty good had the tire failure and and now he's talking about you know the car won't turn and he's having some big handling issues I'm sure that it drug some stuff off underneath the car and and you know the day the day has definitely progressed in the wrong direction for him he's won more races here 
twice as many as the next highest winning active driver. Well, here's a tough day. 20 to go here. Let's see if the pits open this time. I mean, these guys are, it's open. Well, green light's not on yet. Larry, any chance you'd want to ride out this stage on the tires you got? Mike, that was 38 laps, which is a lot of laps, but I get a feeling that we're probably not going to go back racing until around 10 or so laps to go. You could definitely save a set of tires, but the price you're going to pay, you're going to have to pit at the end of the stage, and anybody that pits here, they're going to leapfrog you, frog you as far as track position. Okay. Flip side of that is we just saw it with Ty Gibbs. At will, you can drive up through him. I mean, he passed 24 cars that run. I believe that uh, that's on the table. We can, we can we can definitely get there. If you can save the tires and it comes of need at the end of this thing, it might just be the winning combination. This might be a good time to put scuffs on like that 54 car did a while ago because they work pretty good. There's your Monster Energy Cam on board uh, Tyler Reddick. Reddick had a rough start to the day, uh, spinning at lap 32 and working his way back. Reddick is three laps down. Well, we see a lot of scuffed tires on the wall there. We saw Ty Gibbs do that so that they used up their, their qualifying set of tires that they, NASCAR allows them to put on during the race. And you see the rubber build up on that, on that tire just from, from qualifying and what they did coming into the pits uh, after their qualifying run. So these, most of these tires only have a couple laps on them. Uh, but you don't want to use your sticker sets because tires are at a premium today. Now, pit road did not open that time because the uh, sweeper and uh, jet dryer trucks were working the low groove near the entrance of pit road. They didn't want to impede that. Well, they keep running around here under caution. I don't see the green lights are on yet. They keep doing this. Just to Larry's point, you keep getting closer to the, the stage in here. You may not pit. Hey, Kevin and Clint. When we used to have tire issues because they were too soft, what would we do in practice when we had all of our tires? What would we do with them, maybe for a lap or two? Scuff. Scuff them, right? I, I just wonder, I, we don't have that choice because you don't have but one set of scuffs, but I just think about what that 54 car was able to do mm -hmm. on those set of scuffs that probably was a little toughened up because they were run yesterday. Well, I think any strategy is a is a is a strategy that might work right now because I think this is a this is kind of trial and error and, and as you go here to, to see what's right and what's wrong. So uh, these scuff tires that that most all these guys have up on the wall, um, you're going to have to use them anyway. So you might as well pick a time to, to use gonna, them up. They're not going to open this pit. They're going to help these teams get closer to the end of this thing and uh, help them manage this set of tires, saving a, a set of tires here. Yeah, I think I think what actually what they're doing clean is trying to keep the apron clean so they don't drag it all into the into the pits uh, with all those blowers and everything on the bottom of the racetrack. And then you have the sweepers up on top. They're trying to get as much of that debris open as pop up as possible. So let's take a look at today's uh, protecting the lead sponsored by Armor All Protectant. Ty Gibbs had a long lead, made a pit stop, got a penalty. And battled his way right back toward the front. Currently in third place under this caution flag. Pit road is open. Well, there's your answer. The whole field's pitting. Pretty good. Few. Christopher Bell just a little bit free with his car right now wants a small change for that again it's managing tires and two tires for him you see that there the 54 at Ty Gibbs really good tick tight center but really good with his car he likes it and they were coaching him up heavily about what he needed to do to save those tires Jamie many different strategies here. Brad Kozlowski a little too tight. They talked about taking scuffs. How about this, guys? The 19 of Martin Truex Jr. Left side stickers, right side scuffs. What I think these guys are going to do, if they have the affordability now, you know, I think it'll be close to inside of 10 laps to go. They're going to stay out of this stage and save a set of tires here. Christopher Bell leads the race off pit road. Corey LaJoy is the first of those who stayed out.
Tailgate Kings of Bristol. Man, so much fun over the years I've had interacting with the fans all over the place here. Look at this setup up here. I think that's up there overlooking uh, the drag strip. Always a good time to be had up there. Parked up there with those families a few times. A lot of families at these racetracks. Always been a family sport for me. Glad to see these kids out here today. All right, two penalties on pit stops. Ryan Blaney, too fast entering. He'll start at the tail end of the 29 lead lap cars. And Kyle Busch had a safety violation. Luck of the Irish, who's got it today? I'd say Ty Gibbs so far. Let's see what Corey LaJoy and Carson Hosevar, teammates who did not pit, can do here and pick up some stage points. Bell and Nemechek on fresh tires right behind. Here we go. See both of those cars really struggling in the way there. A lot of people scrambling to get around. Josevar, LaJoy as well. Here comes Nemechek on the outside of him. Christopher Bell on point. I think one of the plays right here is they're hoping that they don't get lapped or wrecked or wrecked. More importantly, three wide all around them. People scrambling to try to get through them. Nine they, to go in the stage. They will have an extra set of tires. Well, LaJoy has had success with this move on different racetracks, but trying to hold his own and stay in the top ten. However, Hosevar has slid way back into traffic, and a couple of drivers have just done a tattoo on his bumper. Eight to go. He was definitely in the way. Look oh, at Logano in the inside, little love tap. That did not move Christopher Bell, and Nemechek is right there as well. Bell slid up the racetrack, opened the door up. Here comes Logano on the inside. Race is on for the stage end. Well, Joey Logano knows he needs these points. With as bad as his the beginning of his season has started, he needs this stage win and the points to go with it. Door slam off of two. Bell's trying to hold him down on the exit, take that exit away from him. Good race for the lead. Six to go, and Nemechek is there as well. Got to get it. Bell had to lift. And here comes Ty Gibbs. Josh Berry has a problem backing up through the field. Five-way battle for the stage two win here. Man, that Gibbs car is so strong today. Rolls that outside very well. He restarted 11th, and he's up to second. Yeah, and I think Christopher Bell has backed off some to try to save his tires a little bit to do exactly what you might have been talking about. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens at the end of this stage, who stays out and who doesn't. Well, if you can't win the stage, what's one more point? Yeah, he's definitely in the tire conservation mode, mode it looks like to me, to try to stay out. To die, Ty Gibbs get this lead from Logano. Three to go. LaJoy has fallen to 20th, and uh, Hosevar to the tail end of the lead lap. So that staying out did not prosper for either of them. Here we go for the lead. Lap and a half to go in the stage. Ty Gibbs takes it away from Joey Logano. Rifled that car off wow. into three. Little that wiggle on exit. Comes Keselowski to the outside of Logano as well for second place. And I think he's I think he's he's been right there with Ty Gibbs as he as he came through the field. When he went by Brad Keselowski, he followed him right through the, the rest of the pack to the front. But that 54 car is definitely the dominant car. Ty Gibbs sweeps the stages in Bristol. Now the deci decision time is on. I think they stay out. I want to save this set of tires. Stage end pit stops when we come back. Ty Gibbs, class of the field so far today. That's such a win, this I would is say. This as mad as I ever was. Uh, <laughs> that literally looked crazed, like yeah, so look, angry. I was like, oh, God, we only have one pair of yeah. legs. We can... <laughs> 
So I started wearing glasses and I was like, wow, this is really good, but I hated the glasses that I started with. So I migrated to just trying different pairs of glasses and I wound up with those glasses right there. It was the only pair that I had. They had metal arms on them and they I needed it. Hugo, Bo <laughs> Hugo Boss glasses that fit inside my helmet so nice and the frames were narrow. And if those would have fallen down, I don't know what I would have done. Well, you can find out Tuesdays and Thursdays on uh, Happy Hour, presented by uh, NASCAR on Fox. Well, I would have been in big trouble, and, and see, I like my glasses, <laughs> so don't don't give me any grief about my glasses. I have to wear them to work. I had to wear them to drive, and it was a it was a life changer for me. You mean because you could I actually see? see? Yeah, I, I beat you blind. <laughs> <laughs> that cut. That cut. <laughs> All right, uh. it is time that the games have begun. Shots are fired and old Clint's ready. <laughs> How many laps did you finish down this Five. race here? Five, Five laps down. Five. You had a, one hell of a streak going and blew it on your last I time did. here. What was it? 32 lead lap finishes in a row. It was bad. And on your exit strategy, blew it. Must not have been wearing your glasses. <laughs> I should have just taken them off. I might have done better. <laughs> well, Ty Gibbs maxed out on stage points today. Got all 20 for winning both stages. Brad Kozlowski, 16. John Hunter Nemechek, Kyle Larson, Truex and Bell all scored big. And the pits will be open next time. Guys, I may have been wrong. A lot of these teams out here got these tires ready. Sitting in the box on the ready. I believe they're going to throw another set on it. We'll see. Austin Dillon gets the free pass. Here they come. And everybody but Austin Dillon that's on the lead lap comes to pit road. Bring him. Well, the 54 of Ty Gibbs talking in code words the entire time until the very end when they decided to pit. The pit call was Doberman. You see, that must evidently be two tires in the 22 of Joey Logano on pit road. They're going to use up their scuff tires right now so they don't have to later on. Jamie. Brad Kozlowski said, I don't think I've ever been part of a race where we could run out of tires. They took four stickers last stop. They've got stickers this time as well. The 42, John Hunter Nemechek, right side scuffs last time around. They're going to do stickers there as he stopped a little sideways in his box. Oh, and Cole, big trouble right there. Cindric hits him in the right front wheel. Couldn't get out of his box slow. Cindric comes sliding in, nailed him. And Ty Gibbs had to wait to leave his pit box as Daniel Suarez was pulling in right in front of him. Still, Gibbs gets off pit road first. Logano second, and somebody's lost a wheel on pit road. How you prove you earn the crown? Winning is in his DNA. How you shut up the haters? I love it. Handle the heat. Who's gonna make the move? It's gonna be a must win. Is this a shooting star? Rock star? Superstar? Okay, okay. Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready? One thing's for sure, you can always expect the unexpected at Bristol. We've seen that. 36 lead changes. The guy out front for both of the stages has been 21-year-old Ty Gibbs. Man, he's led over 43 laps at this point. Keeps ticking them over. Shannon and Jamie, but you say that there's a guy in the field right now that, that could give him a run for his money. Well, I like Brad Keselowski. He's obviously won here three times before. He's been really good in both stages, but he just <laughs> had that huge issue on pit road, Shannon. We'll have to see how that car is. We're getting ready for this, uh, this little <laughs> report right here, and then Brad Keselowski has those troubles on pit road. Just kind of goes... Bomb, bomb, bomb. Right, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. You're not the only one who picked him because it's time for our Credit One Bank ones to watch. Who not named Ty Gibbs? Do you have an eye on <laughs> That's the key to that. <laughs> but no, it's not wah, 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 Shannon. It is the six ball. Brad Keselowski, he's got King's Wine on the side of that thing, and that is why he's going to, after 102 races, Put this baby in victory lane well, at Bristol. Clint was busy eating King's Hawaiian rolls while Brad <laughs> Kozlowski was getting hit in the wheel. So I'm going to say the 20 of Christopher Bell is the guy that can compete to win this race. Trying to two-peat today. That's right. 
Joey Logano, well, he's had an interesting day. He's had two Bristol wins, but the last one came nearly a decade ago. Still, he seems to have been the class of the Fords and is running second right now. So those are some of the ones to watch as we roll into stage number three. Everybody's talking tires. What else are they talking about? Here's our radio remix. I'm asking, do you think it's the resin that's causing the wear on the right side? Or do you think it's the concrete not taking rubber? Just trying to make sure we don't pop a tire. And a spin and turn there two, it and it's Kyle Bush. There's no way everybody has enough tires to get through the rest of this race. Does NASCAR have like a crisis management team? Because this seems like a crisis right now. Obviously, whole field managing tires here. Yeah, even the leaders to fire off are slow. <laughs> First race back on concrete in the spring after three years of dirt track racing here at Bristol. And uh, NASCAR has now released the extra set of tires uh, that teams brought wheels over to have them mounted on. So that gives them a total of 10 new sets for the race, plus one set of scuffed carryovers from qualifying. So big rush to get those back to the pits, measured up and ready for action. Well, let's have a look at what's on the menu sponsored by Cracker Barrel. Larry? Boy, this is a tough one, Mike, because we've got this tire situation. But right there around lap 325, if the caution comes out, pit for fuel there. That way you don't have to worry about fuel anymore. If you feel something with your race car, with your tires, don't stay out there. Hit pit road. Only think about staying out in the final 25 to 30 laps if tire wear has improved. A lot of ifs. Well, history will tell you tire wear does improve, but history today on this day hasn't been the case. Gibbs and Truax bring us back to green for stage three. Logano and Bell right behind. Nemechek's been tough all day with Gilliland, Keslowski and Chastain, Larson and Wallace, the top ten. Yeah, and right now, if you're Ty Gibbs and you see that huge gap behind you, you just want to you just want to check up and, and back up to the car that's behind you because you want to save as much tire as possible in order to get as far into this run as possible with as much tire left on the car. Chastain finally, finally Chastain has reached the top 10 from dead last today. He's here, folks. And Chastain took right side tires only on that last stop, Larry tells us. And that was a great time to, to be able to do those right side tires only with a, such a short run on the left and have the least amount of loss with, with uh, the four tire grip. But you see Ross Chastain wanting to go and Brad Keselowski's like, nope, I'm, this is the pace I'm going and there's nowhere for you to go. So you can beat my back bumper off and I don't care. Now at the front of that pack is Joey Logano in fourth place. He and his team talking strategy. Well, scuff tires. We saw Ty Gibbs put scuff tires on his 54 machine and drove straight to the front from way deep in the field. Well, this is not the this is not the the normal race that that you guys are typically accustomed to watching at home, where. There's a, there's a huge strategy element that's come into play with the tires and, and the wear and everything that's happening on the racetrack. And now you, you have to pace yourself. You have to set a pace with the car uh, in lap time. Well, at least four drivers took just two tires on that stop. Ty Gibbs, the race leader. Todd Gilliland. Ross Chastain and Harrison Burton each took just two tires. That's at least the second time that Gilliland has done that today. Seems like it just keeps getting more cloudy outside, which means it's probably getting more cool, too. And I don't think that's helping this scenario one bit. 
Well, the, the, the thing that's going to help the scenario the most is everybody knows what they have now, and, and now they've had a look at their tires from that long run of when they, when they saved and were, were able to, to run more uh, deeper into the run to see what those tires look like. As we look at the lap times with Ty Gibbs, he's running about 16.65, and that is a little bit faster than I would probably say that they ran before because they were in the, in the 17 flats, and so they have picked up the pace a little bit, and I think Ty can push that pace because he has the best car, and he knows that his car has been the best on the tires. And his fastest lap of the race came right off the restart for stage three. Wow. <laughs> That's bad news for everybody else. That is, that is bad news. And he, Ty Gibbs can put all these cars right here that you see on the screen, he can put this whole field in a complete state of misery if he can run that much faster than everybody else with his tire wear being good. And he, he's going to want to push the pace in order to make everybody else, yeah, exactly. everybody else try to push the pace to, to wear their tires out. So he's in complete control of this, this race because he has the best car and the best tire wear. Larry? Yeah, the only thing I want to say, Kevin, is they have made an additional stop. They are on their eighth set of tires right now. With NASCAR giving these teams one more set, that means they only have three sets left. Ross Chastain is in the same boat. Everybody else with the additional set will have four sets of tires laying in the pits, and we have over 200 laps to go. So I'm a little well, concerned about that. If that's the case, the old Paul Harvey just caught you big time, Kevin. I mean, oh boy. Well, I think I think what one one scenario that might be that he took those stickers off and put those scuffs on. So it's uh, I, either way, he's got the best car and he can push the pace and, and make this miserable on the guys whose cars are only able to keep up with with them setting the pace. And if, when the pace, it's still going to, it's just going to stretch the, the bad cars longer along uh, to being bad. And the good cars are still going to be the good cars, but it's just going to go further into the run. That's the only way they keep that guy down, is, is to be able to have another set of tires over him. Boy, Joey Logano backing up. Kevin, that will up. give them another set. That will yep. give them another set. They pulled those tires right back off, so they'll be even kill with everybody else talking about Ty Gibbs. 10-4. Back in the game, baby. My, my compadre <laughs> is defeated. He thought he had one up on me right here. Larry, man, I thought, boy, I thought you was. All right, lead is hey, tightening up. Yes, Martin sir. Truex right on the right to the back bumper now of his teammate and race leader Ty Gibbs. All right, so let's think team racing here for a moment. How much does Truex pressure Gibbs at this point and why? Well, and I don't, the why is what I like right there. He's going to pass him. He's going to go out there and lead this lap. I want it. Let's but the key is you have the 20 behind them as well. You have three Gibbs cars, one, two, three right here. Let's manage this situation. Let's pace the field and just keep them at arm's length. Well, these guys, the Gibbs cars had the best cars in the fall. Uh, it was Gibbs and, and RFK. And last week with uh, at Phoenix, these guys led a ton of laps and Christopher Bell won the race. So uh, the, the Gibbs cars have been really good on, the, on these short tracks. And let's also not forget that Ty Gibbs put two tires on on that particular pit stop and, and three wide. Joey Logano was backing up and Ryan Blaney wasn't going to wait. Took him three wide to get around. And Joey's definitely off the pace this run for sure. Now Christopher Bell goes to second. He's lost 18 positions this run. As a matter of fact, Joey Logano. Well, we heard him talk about putting their scuff tires on. And, you know, he may he may also know that he can only go so fast because he's got, he's had right front tire issues before everybody had right front tire issues. And at the beginning of the race went straight to the back as well. So he's got a couple things that could be possibly working against him. So Blaney is 18th and works on Daniel Suarez for another spot here. Yeah, and Ryan Blaney got to the back of the pack because of that pit road penalty that, that he had. So he's had to pace himself and pick his moments to work himself back forward. The outside is actually worn in a little bit. They've got it cleaned up a little bit in one and two, but no man's laying down in three and four. If they don't if they get off the door of them in three and four the least little bit, they're in trouble. Three and four, or excuse me, one and two, they can almost be like in that third lane already. Todd Gillen, another of those on just two tires, holding on to a top 10 spot. The track just above the resin area, not just doesn't seem to be taking any rubber. 
Well, that's what I was talking about. I think they have to first clean it up, right? See a lot of marbles up there, and, and one and two, they seem to be doing that a little bit better in three and four. Eric Jones, Chris Busher. And Ryan Blaney, 15th through 17th. Well, and as we run here, Clint, this is starting to look more like a typical Bristol race with everything starting to stretch out a little bit uh, because they're, no matter what the pace is, like I said a minute ago, this is still going to be, uh, it's going to come down to handling. It's just a, a matter of what lap that, that that handling starts to affect whose car. But um, we, like, as you talked about, Joey Logano going to the back of the pack, it sure doesn't look like that's where he would choose to be. No, that car didn't answer at all to those scuffed tires. He's by far the worst. Well, Christopher Bell, as you watch uh, from that front bumper Toyota cam, got right up to Martin Truex, but if these Toyotas are just swapping the lead back and forth, Bell right now is content to ride in second as Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson discuss fifth place. Martin Truex out in front as we close in on 200 laps to go in Bristol. Everywhere but the seat. The seat is leather. Alan, we get it. You love your bike. We do too. That's why we're America's number one motorcycle insurer. But do you have to wedge it into everything? What? I don't do that. This reminds me of my bike. The wolf was about the size of my new motorcycle. Have you seen it, by the way? Happy birthday, Grandma! Really? Look how the brush strokes follow the line of a gas tank. Hey! Hey! Brought my plus one. Jamie. When I was your age, we never had anything like this. What, Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi that works all over the house, even the basement. The basement? So I can finally throw that party and invite Shannon Barnes. Dreams do come true. Xfinity gives you reliable Wi-Fi with wall-to-wall -wall coverage on all your devices, even when everyone is online. Maybe we'll even get married one day. I wonder what I'll be doing. Probably still living here with mom and dad. Fast, reliable speeds right where you need them. That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi on the Xfinity 10G network. Did you see that? Hear that? Feel that? Is this how you prove you earn the crown? Winning is in his DNA. How you shut up the haters. I love it. Handle the heat. Who's going to make the move? It's going to be a must win. Is this a shooting star? Rock star. Superstar. Okay, okay. Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready? Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale with Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Or shop new looks for less with 0% interest until March 2029 on in-store purchases. Celebrate and save today, only at Ashley. Cops is back on Fox Nation. The only place to watch new episodes. Get on the ground. You are going to jail today. Oh. Cops, new episode Friday on Fox Nation. And coming soon, Cops Spring Break. America is streaming. A new era of spring football kicks off. The USFL champs versus the XFL champs. UFL kickoff weekend on Fox and ESPN. What does fearless look like? By trading paint with a champion? Find out for yourself. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. David Pearson was the first to win at Bristol on St. Patrick's Day, 1968 for the Silver Fox. And the legend, Cale Yarborough, did it for Junior Johnson in 1974, while Casey Kane scored here in 2013. The beer is green, the stream is green, and here are all of NASCAR's St. Patrick's Day winners, beginning with uh, Massachusetts driver Ralph Moody at Wilson, North Carolina in 1957. A lot of Hall of Famers on that list. He may have been there, or at least his hat. Martin Truex leading Christopher Bell. Ty Gibbs, Denny Hamlin, who's battling Brad Keselowski for fourth. The Joe Gibbs Toyotas, one, two, three, and almost fourth right here. Yeah, Brad Keselowski's been, been good, and, and we're starting to see some handling issues throughout the field. There's. 
um, Joey Logano's going backwards. The nine cars going backwards. There's there's this handling issue. Tw Harrison Burton just had to pit. He had the same issue. When these right rear tires shut off, or the right front, whatever your issue is, it's over. There's oh, Josh Berry in the wall. Turn two. Took a complete spin in turn number two and brought out the eighth caution at lap 310. Man, you're right, Kevin. Chase Elliott was in big trouble there going a lap down right as that caution came out for Josh Berry. Berry was running eighth, and it looks like his uh, Stuart Haas teammate Noah Gregson will be the free pass car. Here's a look off in the distance. Seems sideways, came around. How about yeah. that 360. Ooh, up good driving. Marbles. I didn't even think he hit the wall. Well, when those, those right rear tires wear out, it, it's like you're driving on ice. I saw that happen to Kyle Busch earlier. Well, I think that was the case with Chase Elliott in the nine car. The guys were digging up uh, radio communication. He said, boys, I've worn my stuff out again. And this isn't this isn't the only track we see this at. Las Vegas is, a, is another racetrack that we see those right rear tires just completely wear out. If your car's not handling or you're abusing your car. Well, we did get, Larry, just about 50 laps on that uh, green flag run. And you told us earlier you needed at least 50 laps on each run to be able to manage the tires you have left. Where do we stand now? Yeah, they're about to put their eighth set on, Mike, and you're right. We were about 45 to 47 laps there, which right now seems to be the number. 311 laps complete. Caution out at Bristol. Five laps to go. There's a Fox Race tracker up at the top of the screen showing you the eight caution flags, including the stage ending cautions that we've had so far. Ten new sets of tires plus one set of scuffs plus one additional new set of tires uh, that Goodyear mounted up and NASCAR has allowed to be used due to the uh, high incidence of tire wear here. In just two weeks, pro football returns to Fox. The UFL kicks off March 30th with USFL champion Birmingham taking on XFL champ Arlington. Then kickoff weekend continues Sunday, March 31st over on ESPN. United Football League debut. Joe Gibbs Racing has four at the top of the board, all four. Brad Keselowski, the one Ford that can run with him. Kyle Larson has been the standout for Chevrolet today. And as they come to pit road, here's Regan. Christopher Bell in second place for Porsche's crew chief Adam Stevens. The car is really, really good right there. Adam Stevens let him know that last run should be exactly what you have as we continue on throughout the rest of the race in terms of the length of it. And the 54 Ty Gibbs doesn't need anything and 54 does not need anything. Jamie. Denny Hamlin fell on the short run. He's tight. On the long run, he's a little free. Sticker tires here for Hamlin. Wants a slight adjustment. His teammate, the 19, Martin Truex Jr., pretty neutral there. Wasn't pushing it, so he's like, I don't know what we can adjust, guys. Just four sticker tires for the 19. Hamlin and Bell first off pit road with Gibbs and Larson, then Truex. And that will be, I believe, the 40th lead change of the day as Josh Berry, one of his crewmen, gets upended. Four races in. William Byron, Daniel Suarez on the super speedways. Kyle Larson at Las Vegas. And Christopher Bell at Phoenix have been to Victory Lane. Who will join them here in Thunder Valley today for 180 laps from finding out? And Denny Hamlin has just led for the seventh time today. That's the 40th lead change of the race, which ties the record for lead changes in a NASCAR short track race uh, set April 1991, won by Rusty Wallace. We listened in on Denny Hamlin. 
records in the 54, nothing in the 20, and uh, nothing in the 19. Oh, what I wouldn't give for your eyes. <laughs> Let's check with Jamie. Well, Mike, you can add the 11 at Denny Hamlin to the list of guys with cords. That was about a 46-lap run right here. This is the right front of Denny Hamlin. His crew chief, Chris Gabehart, told him that's probably because we were tight on the short run, so they did make a slight adjustment there to help out. Thanks, Jamie. Hamlin Bell, Gibbs, and Truex. Four Joe Gibbs Toyotas under a blanket. Then add Kyle Larson, Brad Keselowski. Nemechek, Blaney, Gilliland, and Haley are the top 10. 31 cars on the lead lap. Well, the Gibbs cars are in control of this race. They're in control of the pace, and the whole field knows it, I think, Clint. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's just going to come down to timing of this. You know that they're pulling the reins back, and it's going to be time to let these things run. The question is, is when? Hamlin with a good jump, holds the lead. But here comes Ty Gibbs. On both sides. Christopher Bell thought better of it on the back side of him, but man, four cars at Gibbs. Four horse race so far. Right now the main goal is to get yourself to the end of this race. Put yourself in position to have the tires that you need. Know where your race car is at and how hard you can push it, what your pace needs to be, and what you have left at the end of those runs to be able to win. That's things in your control. That's right. How about somebody else wrecking in the back of this thing and taking all that off your plate, making you, forcing you to make a different decision? That's where it's going to come down to. So, Larry, what's that going to take to get us to the finish? Yeah, Mike, we went back racing at 178 laps to go. Everybody, including the set that they're going to get from NASCAR, they'll have three sets laying. The math says they can run here. If they can run about 43 to 45 laps a run. Now, again, that's not factoring in cautions. That's just straight up. 43 to 45 laps a run, you can make it to lap 500 on what you have. Again, you know, you're talking about, Kevin, you're talking about these Gibbs cars managing the scenario that's in front of them. Somebody could take that out of there. Looking back here, Logano and Dylan off the floor. I mean, these guys are crossed up, beating and banging on one another. If they caution comes out in the back of this, that's what's going to dictate whether or not people have to pit and, and forced out of their strategy. Here's Ty Gibbs and company on their tire situation. I would say Tyler right front, that last one that came off had a two inch strip, just like kind of all the way around, so it didn't have many more laps. We probably overtaxed it a little bit, though, with, you know, older left side. Unless this goes longer here, so we're probably talking 40 on a set, basically. Yeah, he's talking about those left side tires. His, his last run, he had old left side tires on uh, compared to the cars that he was racing around, so. He's still got the best car. He's still got the, you know, the, the speed in the car when he needs it. He's still got the, the tire wear that he needs. But his crew chief, that's great information telling him, hey, you, when you have a chance, you need to take care of that right front tire because that's, that's your weak point. That's going to be your breaking point that you need to save and try to get yourself to the end of the race by taking care of that right front. Yeah, definitely not a for sure lock here, driver. Make sure you keep it in check. You're in the lead. Manage that lead. Well, someone forgot to tell Todd Gilliland, here he comes again, steaming around the outside in fifth place. Uh, at least twice today they've taken on only two tires, not including this last stop. But here's Gilliland moving into fifth. And there's Truex saying, go get it, buddy. Yeah. I'll see you in a little while. Yeah, and, and that's the game. The, the second half of the field is like, okay, I got to get my, I got to get track position. So they're up on the outside or inside, wherever they can go to, to try to get up there and get that track position and then take care of their tires. The guys up front are in the advantage because they can take, they can get the lead. They have clean air. They don't have to push their car as hard because they don't have to work their way through traffic. Gilliland's teammate, Michael McDowell. Uh, in, in, the in a top 10 position there, and Ricky Stenhouse two laps down. Tyler Reddick three down after being involved in incidents earlier today. When we get to the end of this run, when we get to that 40 lap mark, which we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, I have a feeling we're gonna run, you know, right up against that 35, 40 lap mark with 
the handling issues just like we saw in the last stage and you're going to see some of these guys that have pushed forward all of a sudden just drop like a rock and that's going to be from those cords starting to peek through on the tires whether it's the right front or the right rear and when it does like I said before I've said this a few times now when that right front cord or that right rear cord pokes through it is lights out and you feel like that tire is about to fall off the car because it has no more rubber and is not doing anything else on the car. Justin Haley top 10 effort out of him it's a great run for Rick Ware racing in that 50, 51 car so far one hundred sixty three laps to go there's the lead gap from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory Goodyear more driven. Well, we see that that same pace. It's about the, exactly the same as what those leaders ran the last time with those 16, 60, 70s, um, 1680 that lap. That's that's the pace that they feel like they need to run to get those 50 laps in or 60 laps in on, on their set of tires that and I don't think anybody else can do that. And you can see it right there on that aerial shot. You can just see how far away they're gapping the field right now. Larson, the only one there kind of holding pace with him, but I think he just sits back there. It's not like he's they're going anywhere and it be able to run them down in a hurry if you want to. Yeah, if you're not in that if you're not in that first four group, uh, if you're Kyle Larson and you can just keep him in your sights, you're keeping yourself in the game, which we've watched him do since that second caution. You heard Cliff Daniels warn him about it and he's done a phenomenal job of managing that situation. I've watched a lot of sprint car races where he sits back there and does that too. And next thing you know, all of a sudden here he is. That's a dirt racer manage those tires you cannot go out there and blow the tires off this thing 10 laps in melt down and back up through the field Gill and backing up a bit there as Barry Bowman and Jones all streamed past Yeah, you see Josh Berry in front of Eric Jones right there. I mean, he's had a he's had an up and down day, qualified on the front row and was able to to, to lead some laps and really felt like this style of race is is where he needed to be. But you saw him spin out and, um, you know, really hasn't been able to. It doesn't seem like he's got the capability of the 54 to just drive back up there. And he knows that he has to take care of the car and, and just it has to it just happens at a slower rate getting back to the front. So now Briscoe and Chastain have worked their way past Gilliland. Here comes Priest on the inside and Busher from behind. Larry says he'd like to see us get to about lap 365 or lap 370 before drivers start pitting for a new set of tires. Yeah, and that just don't want to be that caution at lap 370. Right. That's right. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I think that danger zone becomes, you know, before 370 when we started to see people having trouble cording their tires. Well, we heard Larry talk earlier about if you feel a problem, just hit pit road. And a lot of these guys are going to push it as far as they can push it because they just know that if they go one more lap, maybe two more laps, that it might be somebody else. So with Ty Gibbs leading Denny Hamlin and Christopher Bell, 151 to go. We'll go Fox side by side. This is Ford Truck Month. With amazing offers across an amazing lineup of Ford trucks, make way for the event that only comes around once a year. Featuring the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. Get ready and get to Ford Truck Month. See your Ford dealer today for incredible offers on the new 2024 Ford F-150. Only during Ford Truck Month. Doug. Hello, Ghostbusters. It's Doug of Doug and Limu. We help people customize and save hundreds on car insurance with Liberty Mutual. Anyway, we got a bit of a situation here. Uh huh? Uh huh? Mm -hmm. Sure, I can hold. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in theaters March 22nd.
The Bush Guide, cold and smooth survival skills. Hello? Should you become stranded, be ready to signal rescuers. Bush. <gasps> How long have I been out here? About 12 minutes. Head for the mountains. The three for meat only at Chili's serves up more deliciousness for just $10.99 than you'll find anywhere else. I mean, have y'all seen those fast food prices lately? It's like even they want you to come to Chili's. This Chili's three for meat is the best $10.99 you can eat. A new era of spring football kicks off March 30th. The USFL champs versus the XFL champs. The heavyweight matchup that the fans deserve. Spring just got stronger. UFL kickoff weekend begins Saturday, March 30th at 1 on Fox and continues Sunday on ESPN. Every home track is the start of something special. Holy cow! Learn more about NASCAR regional tracks near you at nascar.com slash regional. Every time today, Ty Gibbs has wanted the lead. He's just driven to the front and taken it. Car in the wall, turn four. Daniel Hemrick bounces off the wall. Still green. Keeps going, and we stay green for the moment. And looks like Hemrick will have to go at least another lap before he gets to pit road. No caution. Well, Toyota shut out a victory lane and the front row in the first three races this season. Scoring in the last two with a pole, a win, and four stage wins. Well, they dominated at Phoenix. I felt like uh, we saw Tyler Reddick win a, a dual race in Daytona. Uh-oh. Front stretch. Greg Noah Gregson hit the wall in turn four. I think it's the same exact thing we saw. I think these tires are starting to go again. Still green. He's in big-time trouble, as was Hemrick. Trying to nurse it around there. Very reminiscent of what we say. He's going to pit. Yeah, under green. That's 40 laps, Clint. Yep, right on the dot. And under green, you can pull onto the pit road on the side of the track where your pit is. You don't have to go all the way around. I think this is the danger zone we so, speak of. I think it's going to start happening again. Speaking of happening, here Denny Hamlin is looking to the inside of your leader. Ty Gibbs takes it. Hamlin back to the front, leading for the eighth time today. Well, we see these cars drop off like a rock, uh, and and when they do, uh, we we've we've slowed the pace down, and everybody's trying to take care of their cars. But at some point, all the all the handling still goes away on the bad cars. Larry, we're in the window, 366. Yeah, we just crossed the danger zone. Now the window is there about lap 370, about five laps from now. Mike. Okay. We're going to get a caution here in the next five laps. I'm pretty convinced. I agree. That. They're <laughs> dropping like flies. Here's Harrison Burton way off the pace. There's three or four of them out here just nursing around. Reddick getting into three. See him off the pace. Gilliland right behind him. He's having trouble. Burton way up the racetrack, but stays out because nobody wants to be the caution or cause the caution. Burton way off the pace in three and four. Yeah, and it's a game of chicken right now. You don't want to pit because you're hoping that somebody else has has the issue as you see him go by Todd Gill and Stenhouse goes around. Turn four, Stenhouse and Sindrick. That will bring the caution out. Right in front of the leaders. Sure Come was. On. Well, we're 368. Still, still turning right to be able to get these teams down to the end. That's that Gillen. I told you was way off the pace. Stacked them all up getting in here. Cindric shoots in the inside three wide and gets into Stenhouse and wipes them out. Yeah, it looked like he just clipped the apron right there. <laughs> just overcooked it, but they were getting lapped and, and knew that they had to do something that was not capable of what their car could do. Well, it was his chance right here. Got probably back on the lead lap. I don't know if he caused the caution, though. We're going to get it anyway. Definitely caused the caution. I think we may see the Todd Gilliland 
ends up in the free pass position here. Stenhouse, you hear the tires chattering as he goes around. That was actually him working the throttle. Whoa, 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 oh. Whoa, whoa. oh, man. Great move by Ty Gibbs and Christopher Bell right there to avoid the car sitting in the middle of the racetrack like that. But it just shows you how hard it is to get woed up at this racetrack and the speeds you're carrying around here. And that's Bristol. How many times have you been running at the front of this race and you get start to get into lap traffic and then all of a sudden the lap traffic gets antsy and starts to get in a panic and do things that are well, outside they're desperate. Of, you're going to put them a lap down. Desperate, yeah. And, and all of a sudden the wreck's right in front of the leaders and, and that, that wreck right there in front of the leaders just happened to not gather them up in the wreck. That happened, though, because Gillen was in trouble. He, he was way off the pace. He was one of probably four cars that were just nursing it around there. You know they're on the cords trying to get it uh, to, to a caution. All those cars. It happened. All those cars were in trouble. Absolutely. The, the, the two, the 47, and, all of them were getting lapped, or 38 was in big trouble. And look at the track surface. If you're a lap car, you can't go all the way up and just rim ride around the wall to try to stay out of the way. It's all marbles up there. Yeah. Been a wild one. It certainly has been a lot to, to take in here today at Bristol. But that's what makes these teams great and these drivers and crew chiefs and, and everybody on these teams great. They can adapt and adjust, whether it's strategy, driving style, um, handling of their race cars. You, you have to be versatile in these situations to be able to make your car do things that you didn't have a plan for. Watch uh, Christopher Bell snake his way through here. Look how far ahead they are and how hard it is to get stopped. Downshift, downshift, two. Wow. Did a good job of getting slowed down. That's hard to do. Well, you saw him reach up there, grab a downshift. Twice. Try to keep the wheel straight, hard on the brake, straight, 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 and then at the last second, crank it to the left. Let's have a look at some of these drivers' records on the concrete at Bristol. Top nine in the last three races for Byron Hamlin. And Truex and Logano, only one top ten between them in the last uh, half dozen or more races. That's the one that surprises me right here. That's two big time names, champions, 20th or worse. Well, Kyle Busch has, has not had really any great finishes in this next gen car here at Bristol. Here. Lead lap cars head for pit road once again, Regan. Well, Mike, these guys still continuing to try and make these cars perfect. The 20 of Christopher Bell wants to be just a little bit looser, and we're talking minimal adjustment for everybody right now, asking for lap times on every lap of the race, which is a little abnormal. The 54 of Ty Gibbs, they got him just a little bit tight. He needs to be freed up just a little bit. They went too far with it at the last stop. Jamie? Danny Hamlin, the 11 team, they like what they saw in that last run, said he was pretty neutral. They're going to make a little bit more of an air pressure adjustment in the right front. The 19, Martin Truex Jr., still pretty okay, has a little bit of a brake shake, wants to be able to push just a little harder. Right. Benny Hamlin going to bring them off pit road with Christopher Bell, Ty Gibbs, and Kyle Larson. One hundred twenty five laps to go. Todd Gilliland caused this stack up that ended up in putting us under caution for the ninth time today. One hundred twenty four laps to go in Thunder Valley, Tennessee. Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Ty Gibbs, Kyle Larson, the one non Toyota in the top five, his Chevrolet. Uh, Brad Keselowski, sixth, is the leading Ford in this race. Now, Greg Stucker with Goodyear uh, met with the media a few minutes ago. We tested, uh, we tested here last year with the intent um, to come up with a tire package that generated more tire wear. That was the request from NASCAR and the teams. So now we're trying to understand what's different What's behave? Why is the racetrack behaving differently this weekend than what than what it did uh, a year ago? It's the same. Uh, it's the same package. Uh, it's the same tire combination. Um, 
obviously the difference is resin was placed on the lower groove instead of the PJ1, um, yet I still think the racetrack should be taking rubber um, as it did last fall. So here, here's the interesting piece is that we didn't put the PJ1 down, we put resin down instead. The reason that we did that is is this is a wet weather racetrack now. So everybody felt like the PJ1 was going to be too slick to race on with the wet weather tires. Uh, second thing that I heard him say that that I, I agree with with Greg on is why isn't the why isn't the racetrack taking rubber outside of that resin? Uh, the resin is is on the bottom, and but even when you're running in a, in the second lane, there's look how there's clean no, it there's is. There's no rubber. No in that rubber second at all. Lane from from the tires. So uh, regardless. Regardless of, of what it is, it is what it is for the teams, and there's a win on the, on hand here today, and, and the strategy of how you race today is just different now. Yeah. We saw this a few years ago where the track did not take any rubber because it was an extremely cold day and uh, just not warm enough to activate where the rubber would work its way into the racetrack. You see how those tires are graining like that? That's what's just cheese grating them things off. That's right. right? Now, Joey Logano uh, just came in for tires. Here's his team. And uh, so this extra set of tires that we were getting from Goodyear, those are like old tires, like last year, uh, old day code. So I burned them up. That was what I used right there. So uh, from here on out, we'll be back on the good stuff. Okay, good to know. Well, that, I'm glad, I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we're, we know that because now we know that it's not going to be better. Ready for the restart. It'll be 121 laps to go. Hamlin and Bell out front. Still a little bit confusing on that. You know, uh, you just heard them. Well, it wasn't any better. I heard you, Kevin, say that, but why were they worse? The same tire. Well, I think that the, the set that they gave them had older date codes to they were built further back in time. So the rubber's not as good on on the tire. The fresher tires are usually faster and, and, and better. So at least there's not something that they're the, the one set that that NASCAR has given the teams is not going to be a major advantage or disadvantage for for somebody as they put them on. It's the same as what we have. We just have another set of tires, right? Ty Gibbs up into second. And the Joe Gibbs Toyota's run one through four once again, being chased by Keslowski, Blaney, and Haley in the 51. On the outside, Justin Haley trying to make it work. On the restart, Kyle Larson started at the back. Equipment interference on his pit stop. So he's out of contention. How about Haley? And he's been up there all day. And this is one of those races where how you drive your car and the way that your car is handled and everything that happens is, is just different than every, every other week with the style of race that this is. And he's been right in the middle of it all day. And he's been good at those scenarios. Adversity. When adversity strikes, these teams are for a loop. Justin Haley, think of the first time we went to the clash over there. He shows up and was fast right off the bat. That kid can get it done in some pretty adverse situations. Jamie? Yeah, you guys are exactly right. Justin Haley started 32nd up to 6th. Haley in seventh, Grala in 17th. They're having a good day. Well, these types of days are interesting because a lot of times uh, a team like Rick Ware Racing might not be as aggressive on cambers. They might not be as aggressive on their ride heights. And, and sometimes that plays into your hands because it's easier on the tires where all the all the other teams are like nitpicking every single thing to get everything that they can out of the tire. And based upon what we saw in the fall, these cars are set up to come here and, and maximize the grip and, and wear on on all four tires on the car to the to the max of what they know. Well, the pace has picked up on this restart. The last green flag run was about a second off the fastest laps of the day. Right now, we're only about three quarters of a second off uh, those fastest laps. 
So Denny Hamlin trying to get trying to get this over in a hurry. Well, and it's those those same cars at 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 the front. Gibbs cars are the best cars. They can push the pace, and and they're forcing these other guys to to either keep up or get further behind. So Larry, are we going to get into that danger zone again on this set of tires? Well, Mike, here, here's where it's fickle. We, we now only have to make 40 laps a run to get the lap 500. But the only way we find out how much further we can go is when somebody loses a tire. So th that, that's, that's the box we're in right now. Well, the box, the box that we're in is there. <laughs> Somebody's going to lose a tire. Yeah, right. You just don't know. You don't know who it is. And all the good cars have, have migrated to the front. And, and it's just that it's that game of chicken that we've been talking about all day. Look out. Whoa. Boy, Ryan Blaney got muscled around there. He got moved is what he got. Yep. Ross Chastain, he got Chastain. Yep, Chastain moved him right up out of the way. He did a whale of a job holding that car underneath of him. Tank swapped all the way down the front straight away. He won't be happy about that, Ryan Blaney. Chris Buescher's view of this. Quite a bit of contact. There's a lot of contact happening right there with several cars. Here comes another one. Blaney trying to get down in the in the bottom lane there, and Austin Dillon says, no, 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 I'm here. And this is battling for 20th place. Well, I think that was a little of the case. I'm not going to dump that all on Chastain. I think Blaney was trying to hold him down and, and not allow him into that hole as well, that he kind of created and opened that door. Chastain went ahead and... Stepped his way on through it. How about this for the lead? Yep. Ty Gibbs back to the front to lead for the ninth time today. He's Hamlin has led 10 times. Let's take his teammate Christopher Bell right with him. Look at this four horse race. And Gibbs just pulverizing the field right now. Joe Gibbs Racing may be on their way to their first ever one, two, three, four finish. If I didn't know any better, I thought we were at Daytona and they're just. Helping each other save fuel. Well, Denny took off as fast as we've seen him take off right there, and Ty sat sat behind him there and decided that it was time to go a little bit faster than, than what he was going as far as the pace. I want to get in the lead. I like Ty getting to that plan. I want to get in the lead, and then I want to be able to slow them down and manage that race accordingly from the lead, not from fourth. Now, Kyle Larson is mired back in 22nd, and we'll show you why. It was on this last pit stop. You know, watch this tire get away. There it is, a bad roll right there in Pete's. The guy's in front of him. That's a foul penalty every time. So he restarted at the back in 28th. He's gained back seven positions since. And that's how this goes. You know, he's sitting there riding fifth or fifth or sixth and in a perfect position to take care of his car and his tires and everything that was that was happening. And now he's had to pit penalty and now he has to go back through the field and use his car up more than he has probably all day. The other thing about that is you, you work on your balance around clean air and running up front. And then yep. all of a sudden you get mired back there in traffic and you're, you're, you're getting pinched down, trying to make a pass on the bottom. You're tight. You can't get underneath them. You can't get on the throttle. You need the real estate up off. Everything changes back there mired in traffic. Seventh place, Nemechek moving forward once again. Well, he's another one of those Toyota guys, and, and he's been up and toward, towards the front of the brace all day. Yeah, this is a big day for John Hunter. John Hunter, Brad Keselowski, those guys have hung out around the front six or seven positions all day long. The first four, you know, have typically been the, the Gibbs cars, but we see Justin Haley sitting there in sixth and John Hunter right behind him in seventh. McDowell, Wallace, and Barry complete the top ten. Six Toyotas in the top ten with four Fords. Regan, how about our leader? 
Well, Mike Ty Gibbs continuing to manage the field out front right now. Think back to yesterday also. Chris Gale told me yesterday when they had trouble in practice, he wanted to put another set of tires on the race car to make sure everything was good. He opted not to. He took a chance there. Look at how much that's paying off right now. Had they taken that chance, one less set for today if they'd have done that. Gibbs has led the most laps today, 122 now. Hamlin 94, Truex 52. Great start to the season for last year's Rookie of the Year. Third at Phoenix, highest average finish of all drivers, and three straight top tens. Yeah, we saw this coming last year. Really the second half of the year, really all year last year, he finished races, but would, would make mistakes here and there and, and cost himself good finishes. But he's just a grinder. And, you know, he's in fast cars, got great teammates, got a great organization around him. And he's just, a, he works really hard and, and puts himself in position to have a chance to win. And I think he's going to continue to do that. He's going to put Ricky Stenhouse another lap down with 87 laps to go in Bristol. This season, Toyota Racing is looking for jaw droppers. Break for Martin Shurex right there, the fastest lap of the day. Iron stomachs that can stand the pressure. <laughs> and quick draw thumbs that leave their own smoke trail. So hold on tight and strap yourself in. This season, we want you. Join us at Toyota Racing. Yeah! Everyone's hyped that Wendy's made the official hamburger of March Madness a buck. But Tyler and Toby are on another level. Get it for a buck, get it for a buck. Dead shingle, dead shingle. I'm hearing that song in my sleep. Get hyped with fresh, never frozen beef on Wendy's Dave Single for a buck. Only in the app. People agree this season the mask singer cranked it up to 11. And Fox Wednesday starts the fire. We're toasting Billy Joe. It's a night of greatest hits with four new mystery superstars. Oh, you had to sing a better watch. I'm scared. Plus performances you have to hear to believe. Only the good die young. Oh my God, he sounds like Billy Joel. He does. The Masked Singer is all new Wednesday at 8, 7 central on Fox. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. See, HomeQuote Explorer lets you easily compare home insurance options so you can get what you need without overpaying. Yeah, we spent a lot on this kitchen. No, oh, yeah, really high-end stuff. Sorry, that's our ghosts. Yeah, okay. It's more annoying than anything. Too bad there's mold behind the backsplash. Yep, there's mold. Well then, let's see if we can save you some money with Progressive. Guess how much I originally paid for this fireplace? 23 bucks. Materials and labor. Just ignore him. You got bamboozled! It's the fastest, most unpredictable speedway on Earth. The big one is back. Get your tickets now at TalladegaSuperspeedway.com. 78 laps to go. The uh, pace has dropped off another two-tenths of a second, and we're starting to see a lot of cars up and out of the groove and off pace. Yes, we are. See the four-car Josh Berry folks been running in solid the whole time look over and see Gillen starting to slip up. Bell, we see Bell at the back of that frame right there go up the racetrack and, and start to fall back. 12 car, Logano. Gilliland, and here come the leaders. I think that's that danger zone we talk about. That's that Hamlin light. for the lead, Gilliland gets bumped up high, everybody jumbles together and Truex almost stole the lead. Just about wiped out all three of the Gibbs bunch right there. Gillen, again, as the tires, he's down to the cords and in trouble. That's exactly how the last caution happened. Same car. Same appears to be true for uh, Josh Berry, for that, Hemrick. And Logano, you see the leader go right around Logano here. And Blaney's in trouble right in front of them. Sindrick, 
slow at the top of the racetrack at start finish. A lot of drivers in difficulty right here. It's coming, boys. Yeah, and this is just that part of the run that we've been talking about all day where the car just shuts off with whatever end that you're struggling with and you can't go any faster. Well, so it shuts off because there's no rubber on them tires anymore. Yeah. You're down to the cord. And the bad cars are still the bad cars. Josh Berry has made it to pit road, the first to pit under green. That 20 car, Christopher Bell, he's one of those Gibbs cars that's starting to slip and slide around. He's in trouble. Ryan Blaney up out of the groove. He's he's in trouble. Brad Keselowski right on the back bumper of the, the 20 car right here. Josh There's Barry. That yeah. was the first one that I saw. He said, forget it. We need to pit. Regan. Mike, first time all day. I've heard this on the 54 radio. Ty Gibbs just told the team right rear starting to be a problem right now. Keep an eye on him. Gibbs in the wall. Guys are really starting to slip and slide around. They're all over the place, folks. Yep, we see the 54 card get passed by Brad Keselowski right there. Everybody trying to nurse it along to the next caution and not be that caution. Don't be that caution. More importantly, they're all over the place in trouble. This is the longest green flag run today. And this is where the race is going to be won or lost. And, and there's the five just, car. Kyle Larson going a lap down. He's in trouble. Yeah, you just don't want to be the guy that has to come to pit road. One lap's okay, but if you come to pit road, it's going to be multiple laps if the caution comes out. Only two Gibbs cars left in this thing. It's those two veterans. They're still manage those tires and still obviously have the rubber left to do it. Martin Trex Jr. and Denny Hamlin leading his field. Chase Briscoe. His car is shut off. Contact with the eight and a, as the 19 goes by. And still, Josh Berry is the only one that has stopped under green. He has fresh tires. He's flying by cars, but he has lost two laps with the green flag stop. Yeah, and right now they're telling Josh Berry, do everything no. you can do to get to the 11 car to get yourself back on one lap down before the oh, caution trouble comes turn out. four. Blaney almost turned it around and then almost got run over by an onrushing Tyler Reddick. He's been nursing that thing around there for 10 laps. I think he's got a lap, uh, a tire down. He's no. way off the pace. Yeah, and that's the that's that is the pit road. That's the downfall of trying to ride it out. Kyle Larson, Larson is in. Look how far Gilliland's off the pace. And it's Blaney will pit time. this time. This the right front tire is completely flat on Ryan Blaney's car. Denny Hamlin, Martin Shurek still rolling through the field, putting on a show. Somehow, some way, they've kept the balance on these race cars. They've managed that tire, got to the end of these runs. That's two old KG veterans. Priest way off the pace as they lap him. Yeah, and I think as, as you ride around here, you're just losing so much time. Oh, Barry almost into the wall in turn two. He just rushed turn one so hard. He diamonded the track and almost ran out of real estate. Yeah, and on that pit stop, wow. we saw both right side tires of Ryan Blaney's car all the way down to the cords. Heck of a race for the lead between these two teammates, Truex and Hamlin, slicing through the field. How long will those tires last? Well, it just goes to show you how much better their cars are handling than everybody else's and how much easy, the easier they are on the tires. Kyle Larson on fresh tires rushing through the field. And they're going to lap oh. Christopher Bell. Bell's got a flat. I saw the sparks come out of the back of the yes, car. Yes, right rear flat on Bell. Let's see what happens getting in the one. It might come around on him. He's got to slow down. And he'll make pit road. Right rear's down. You see that left front up off the ground? That means the right rear's down. That's how stiff and rigid these cars are. There it is. You see it flat. Now Larson is flying around the racetrack like Barry. He's also two laps down and two laps down. There's no way that's going to get you the free pass. So Blaney same thing. Blaney's going by cars so fast. He's coming right up behind the leader right now. He's going by him so fast. He doesn't know which direction to go with his new tires. He oh. has to get around these leaders. It's a must. You Do not let this caution come out before I get them passed. Sorry, Truex, I need to go. Well, he, I think he, they're both in trouble here. He doesn't want to cause a caution, and, and right now the way that this thing's going, it seems like everybody's going to have to pit. But Blaney is four laps down, so he gets one of those back, but that won't be enough. Here's some Brad Keselowski radio. Everybody 
That's the biggest thing. Do not have a caution. These guys are pitting left and right. If somehow, some way, you can keep that thing out there and keep managing these things, keep the wheels rolling. Yeah, and the guys that are that are having to pit have basically just worn the things that down to be out of air. Ty Gibbs way off the pace, off of two. He's going to come down pit. He slid way up toward the wall at turn two. He's got a flat left rear. Got a fire under the hood. Yeah, it's brakes on fire. Ty Gibbs. Got a right rear flat. Busher is in, Priest is in. And just to clarify, under caution, you only have to use your pit road straightaway. You don't have to go around the corners, so you just use your designated straightaway pit stall. Daniel Hemrick is in. Corey LaJoy has made his stop. And there's only six cars on the lead lap. Hamlin back through Nemechek. Everybody else is at least a lap down due to making these green flag stops. Nemechek is in. Yeah, now just five. Logano. Chase Elliott back in the top five teammate, Bowman. Managing Chase. these tires, Chase Elliott hits pit road. They're gonna be told now, just go. Got a car way off the pace, off of two. He's all but stopped, I think that's Josevar. No uh, caution, these guys are begging for no caution. The leader, Denny Hamlin on pit road. Hamlin up at the turn four end of the front stretch pit. Going to get four tires under green. Austin Dillon is in. Logano is done with his stop. Yeah, and and you see everything inside of those inside of those wheels, uh, probably rubber on fire or the brakes are so hot that it's all that rubber buildup. It's all on the brakes. That's exactly what it on is. Fire. Truex is in. Almondinger. And Hosovar hit the wall in turn three. Completely out of control. I think he's got a flat tire. Hosovar off the four. Kozlowski pits. All right, this is where it's a must. No caution. Whoa. See that's, those, that's that rubber. I think that's all that rubber built up on these hot brakes when they came in, caught on fire. Massive amounts of rubber. You see these things clear down to the cords. It came from somewhere. Alex Bowman, runner up in the Daytona 500 by thousands of a second finds himself in the lead at Bristol with 50 to go. Yeah, and right now he's given up two seconds a lap. Bubba Wallace slow entering pit road now. Gregson is in. Eric Jones is in. Here he comes. Bowman coming onto pit road. I was going to say he's about out of opportunities of people causing a caution here. About everybody's pitted. Kaz Grala, Kyle Busch complete their stops. Oops. Oh. And the, the pit woes continue for Kyle Busch. Yep. Didn't have that lug nut on. Got him stopped. Well, that is something that I didn't think we would see today. It's a complete green flag cycle. And basically what they did is they ran their cars until the tires went flat. That's exactly what they did. So <laughs> very lucky that we didn't have a caution. It was people all over the place, way off the pace, flat tires, left and right. But now, Larry, 47 laps to go. Is this going to put us right back in that danger zone again? Well, I think about the ones that pitted very early because of tire issues, Mike, like Josh Berry, like Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson. I, I, I don't see them being able to remotely make it all the way to lap 500 should we not have another caution. I think they're, you're spot on. Now, flip side of that, Hamlin and Truex, they are in the catbird seat right now. We're going to manage this thing a little bit. As soon as we get any pressure on us, we're going to have the affordability because we pitted late, uh, later than everybody to go when it's time. But they, still have, to, they still have to go 51 and 52 laps. They Hamlin. just proved that they can do it, though. Yeah. Went over 60. So after green flag stops, we have 12 cars on the lead lap. Make that 11 now. Uh, Chase Elliott is the last car on the lead lap uh, in 11th place with Chase Briscoe and everybody else a lap down. Inside. I think Larry's spot on. Barry's the one that's got me nervous. I don't, as early as he had to pit, you got to remember he was pretty much the first one way off the pace put those tires on him, meaning he couldn't go the distance last time. Man, he ran hard when yeah. he came out of the pits. Well, he had to because he wanted to try to pass the leaders as, as many times as they could to try to keep themselves from being multiple laps down. 
Yeah, I would say that Josh Berry's going to have to pit again because his car is going to shut off when those tires finally run out, run out of rubber on the right side. Three of the oldest drivers are the most experienced. Three of the top four right there, Hamlin, Truex, and Keselowski. I have to think that that plays a little bit of a role in this. That takes you back to the old days. That's how we all started racing in this. When you had massive horsepower and could blow the tires off these things, thinking about a track, even like here, it would go away. You had to manage those tires. Martinsville, all these short tracks, Richmond, that's what you had to be good at, tire management. So after the stop among the four Toyotas that were leading the race, Hamlin and Truex remain one, two. Christopher Bell back in seventh, and Ty Gibbs, who led 137 laps today, back in 14th. Briscoe in the free pass position ahead of Priest and Gibbs. I love the spot that Denny Hamlin and Truex are in, though. They just have to just ride around here. You're light years ahead of everybody. Manage this gap. Manage your car. Do not push it whatsoever into the corner, on the throttle up off. Just roll the car around there. Make laps. Yeah, and based on their pace, Clint, I mean, it's still, still as fast as they ran the last run, lap time-wise. It's kind of stayed consistent, though. I remember early on you were saying 60s, 1660s, 70s, 80s is yep. pretty much where they were running. Look over your shoulder. Here we are at a 69, 85, and a 75 top three guys. So four cars pretty much checking out on the field. Hamlin and Truex with a six-second gap back to the Fords of Keselowski and Barry who have a four-second gap back to the Chevrolet of Kyle Larson, the Ford of Chris Buescher, and the Toyotas of Nemechek and Bell, the Ford of Haley, and the Chevy of Bowman. And that's all that's on the lead lap as we look at 34 to go. Hamlin's starting to get into some massive lap traffic here. That's going to hold them, uh, them guys up. They're definitely getting desperate in front of him. Look at this melee in front. And the that's racing almost three wide in front of him. That is not what you want to see as a leader. Look at Truex catch him. Yeah, and, and that's... Typical Bristol, once you catch that lap traffic, and like we saw earlier, just that panic sets in and you start making bolder moves. That was a second and a half last lap. Now it's down to almost a tenth of a second. Right on his bumper. Not what Denny Hillen wanted to no, see. No. Chase Elliott, one down, and behind him, uh, Corey LaJoy, two laps down. But these other cars are going to fight to stay on the lead lap if they can. Martin Truex, only two top fives here in 33 starts and none in the last decade. Best finish here was second back in 2011. This is one of the wildest races I've ever sat and been a part of. This is, uh, this is. Wait a minute, you just said that a couple weeks ago in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, well, that was, that was just wild for racing. This one's wild for racing strategy, uh, new things to navigate here, so. I'm learning, a, I'm learning a lot sitting up here. You're digging your new role? I'm digging it, man. 52 lead changes so far. That is a record for NASCAR on short tracks. Previous record was 40. Rusty Wallace here at Bristol, and that was 30 years ago. This puts me back in the old Bristol. Here you got two guys battling out for the win at Bristol and massive amounts of lap traffic in front of them. Who can navigate around here, save these tires, manage these tires? That's who's going to win this race, and it's probably going to be between these two teammates. And that's the key word, Clint. Who's managing their tires as they're going through this traffic? A lot of lap traffic in front of them. Half a track of nothing but lap traffic, solid. Last fall, that's where Denny Hamlin came out with the I just beat your favorite driver uh, speech, which he has now retired. His dad advised him that was not a good idea. Thank you, Dad. Yep. And he won here at Bristol last fall. And this is the first time in four years the spring race has been held on the concrete surface. This goes to show you you're never too old to listen to the old man. Boy, I don't like that. It's too arrogant. Fix it. Can I tape I that and play it back for you next week? Just every once in a while. There's always if he something. wins, he might get on yeah. again. <laughs> There's always something to learn. Truex is right there. One slip up. 
And it's going to happen in front of him. It won't be a slip up on Dini. It'll be a slip up of these guys desperate trying to stay on the, on, on, you know, from going another lap down. Those guys get together right in front of Dini, lands in his lap, and Truex will be there to take it. Well, and I think that's the key, too. If you're Truex, stay back a little bit. Let that stuff happen. If it happens right in Denny's lap, be there to be able to make an adjustment, make the pounce. Well, that's exactly how he lost the lead gap last time, and now it's it's dwindled back down as these guys race side by side, trying to keep Denny from passing him to put him on another yeah. lap down. Yeah, now Dylan is two laps down. Hemrick is three laps down. And Truex looks like he's getting a little impatient here. Well, and the bad news for for Denny Hamlin is as you look in front of him, it's just it's just more cars everywhere. It's, it's not going to clear up. There's no gaps. It's just no, it's, 14, it's a, 15 cars. It's the world's fastest conveyor belt. Yeah. And there's a good look at it. Well, there it is. Yeah, look him back here. You can see him right there. But look at all the traffic in front of him. Twenty laps to go. The Toyotas have pretty well dominated the day before Joe Gibbs drivers between them have led nearly 400 laps. Well, and the best part about this, Mike, is this is going to come at the end of one of these tire runs and these cars are going to be all over the place. Now, how about Josh Berry in fourth place, second of the Fords? He was the first driver to pit in that green flag sequence and he's come out of this quite well. We listened in to the four. It's the craziest race I've ever been a part of. Yeah, me too. Doing great. Doing a really good job here. Got a pass for the lead. That's exactly what happened. They got together in front of Danny, slipped up. He had to make an adjustment. Boom, Truex takes the lead. Well, that's the race is on. 17 to go, baby. That's exactly what you just said, Clint. It's all going to come down to the lap traffic. And now Martin's on the bottom, and Danny chooses the top. And that's sometimes what it comes down to is just who guesses right. Gets in the corner, slips up. This isn't over yet. Massive amounts of traffic for these leaders. They are too wide right in front of them. Denny Hamlin back to the outside. And it's going to come at the most ill-handling part of the run, and it's going to be worse for the guys in front of them than it is for them. Look at the cars in front of them. Chastain, Bubba Wallace on the outside. Chastain trying to stay on the lead lap. Denny moved his car. Bubba, get out of my way. Sorry, I own that thing. Well, Wallace is three laps down. Well, on the other hand, there's nowhere to hide. It's his car. He can do whatever he wants with it. <laughs> Did a good job there. 54 lead with changes. Chastain on, on yep. Truex. And we probably have not yet seen the last one. Heavy traffic, Bell ahead. And Dylan has been fighting really hard, trying to keep himself in front of the race leader. Nemechek right up there, Gregson. Where will Hamlin go? And how is he gonna carve his way through this path? Well, it's gonna happen quick if it stays green. We're talking about three minutes is all it's gonna take. So now one little mistake right there, one bobble, and here comes Martin Truex right back on his bumper. Truex looking low. Hamlin thought about the outside on Dillon. Thought better of it. It's timing. You have to time these passes. If you're Denny Hamlin, do not catch them in a bad scenario getting into the corner where you have to lift, check, and give uh, Truex a, a chance to pounce. All right, Nemechek just ahead. He's the last car on the lead lap now in eighth place. That's an amazing stat. 54 lean changes. Incredible. Wasn't too long ago we were talking about John Hunter Nemechek being right in the mix in sixth or seventh, and now he's going to lap down. He's still, he's still in eighth place, but shows you the difference in how good these first few cars are. Nine Denny to go. Truex has got to get by Nemechek in a hurry to keep pace with Hamlin. Then he's able to get to their outside and make passes on these lappers on the outside a little bit better than Truex. It's when they're too wide in front of Denny, he gives Denny, or, or excuse me, Truex a chance to run him down. All right, now the leaders are together again. Nothing separating them as they work the outside of Josh Berry. Yeah, well, Josh, there's Josh Berry. Go ahead, Kevin. It has shut off. Yeah. It has shut off, Clint. Things corded. He was inside the top five there. Big trouble. Well, he pitted earlier, so we knew that his car was probably going to be one of the first ones to shut off. Did not make it. Gilliland, same thing. 
backing up in the field. Now Kyle Larson earlier uh, on his pit stop may be in the same situation six to go. And that's what Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Who's, whose car is going to shut off first? Because we saw the 20 car of Christopher Bell and the 54 car of Ty Gibbs, the last run, all of a sudden done. One. Six to go, five to go here. If I'm Denny Hamlin, hey, it's in God's hands now. I'm going for it. They're both going for it. If it wears out, so be it. But anybody because I didn't try. Ryan Blaney goes two laps down to the leaders. After having a promising first half to the race, not a lot of lap traffic in front of them now. Oh. And Truex closes to within two car lengths. Three to go. See him go around Justin Haley, who's had such a great day today, and his car has turned off. Yeah. Man, I thought he was going to end up in the top ten. Well, that did not a run for them. That did not help Truex. He falls to five car lengths back. He had a little more trouble getting around Haley than Hamlin did. Yeah, two to go. Just caught Haley. Again, that timing thing that I was talking about. Caught him in a bad place getting into turn three. Gave Hamlin a little bit extra lead. Exactly what he looked. Coming around here to one to go. This is just what the doctor ordered. It's exactly what Denny Hamlin wanted to see. White flag sponsored by Credit One Bank. Nurse it around here. around the outside of Chase Briscoe and by about 12 car lengths Denny Hamlin is going to win Bristol two in a row here My man. a winner here last fall and he wins on the return to spring concrete a track that's been I dirt so for the last three years thank you my favorite racetrack we got another one thank you it's going to take you a couple days to go back and dissect all of this. My goodness. <laughs> that was wild. 52nd career win for Denny Hamlin, 13th on the all time NASCAR win list. Bristol in September was his last victory. Teammates, 1 2. Joe Gibbs other... Racing, 1 2. RFK Racing, Brad Kozlowski, third. Hendrick Motorsports, fourth and fifth with Bowman and Larson. 210th win for Joe Gibbs as a car owner and second of the season. Well, Denny Hamlin was up front all day. Uh, they did a great job of, of maintaining their pace, figuring out what their car needed and just made it happen to the end. How about Larson getting back up to the top five after that pit road mishap? That was big. He ended up having to pit early. Uh, and John Hunter Nemechek, sixth. Six, that's a, a whale of a job. Chris Buescher coming back for a top 10 from way back deep in the field. When was the last time we had a race finish with just five cars on the lead lap? I don't know, but I love the strategy of all the things that happened and with the drivers and the teams having to manage the, the, the way that their cars were handling, how fast you went. There was way more to it than just hammer down, go as fast as you can go and, and um, you know, hope for the best. Age, wisdom, and experience. That's what prevailed today. Denny Hamlin, Mark Shrex Jr., Brad Keselowski. And a really three. fast race car. Those Gibbs cars were fast today. Well, the other two ended up ninth and 10. They're Fair. still learning a little bit. Fair point. 54 lead changes, an all-time NASCAR record on a short track. Denny Hamlin, Chris Gabehart, and their crew. Well, they're shooting off fireworks, but I think we've had 500 laps of them. Well, I guess there was a little rubber left on there, Clint. <laughs> Still burning down on that 11 camp. He had more to give. This is every driver's favorite racetrack. This is the one everybody wants to win at more than anything. Such a neat experience, such a cool racetrack. That tire's down. <laughs> it's flat. <laughs> it's had enough.
like Kyle Busch before him, Denny Hamlin is a very polarizing driver. You either cheer for him to win or you cheer for anybody but. And you can hear the crowd's reaction. It is decidedly mixed. It's only been that way the last, well, since the podcast. <laughs> Kevin, be careful with that podcast journey you're on. <laughs> uh, Dover 2004 was the last race where we had five or less cars finish on the lead lap. Let's see if he says it. Nope. <laughs> Love it. Got the job done. Number one, baby. Regan Smith. Well, one of the wildest Bristol races we have ever seen, Danny. You find a way to get the job done, get your second in a row here at Bristol. How did you manage those tires all day long and still have enough left at the end to hold off your teammate? Yeah, it's just uh, that's what I grew up doing here in the short tracks of the whole Mid-Atlantic. So uh, South Boston, Martinsville, all those tracks, just this is what I grew up doing. So once it became a tire management race, I, I really liked our chances, but uh, Obviously, the veteran in Martin, he knew how to do it as well. And so uh, we just had a great car, great team. The pit crew just did a phenomenal job all day. Can't say enough about them. Uh, first time with Oil Change Express on the car. Appreciate all the Mavis folks as well. So Sport Clips, FedEx, Jordan Brand, Coca-Cola, the whole group. Just, uh, man, it feels so good to win in Bristol. Denny Hamlin wins a wild one in Bristol. And Martin Truex Jr. comes up one spot short. What was it like for you managing your tires, managing your equipment for 500 laps? Well, apparently that's what I needed to have it have happen here at Bristol to, to be able to have a shot at winning. So uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, just really proud of my team, everybody uh, on our Auto Owners Camry and everybody at Bass Pro TRD, um, all of our, our partners. Um, James and the guys did a great job this weekend, Jazzy, and having a plan coming here. And um, yeah, I guess this tire management thing fit into my wheelhouse here at Bristol. But man, the difference was just um, coming out of the pit so far behind Denny. You know, I had to use mine up more than him on the last run. And then the last four laps, five laps of the race, my regular was cord. So we had, gave it a hell of an effort. Congrats to them. But uh, man, what a job by everybody at, at TRD, JGR. And, um, you know, the Toyotas, our Toyotas are really working well right now. And um, had a lot of fun today. Wish we could have come up one spot short. Second always hurts a little, but uh, it's a really good run for us here. And uh, it's been a great season so far for us. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, thanks. Joe Gibbs racing with a dominating performance in Bristol, running one through four for a good part of the race. Denny Hamlin holding off teammate Martin Truex by one second for the win. Brad Keselowski scored third. The Chevys of Bowman and Larson fourth and fifth. Hamlin handles the Bristol concrete. So Denny Hamlin said at the beginning of the season that his goal was to win 60 cup races. He is one closer after leading 163 laps in a wild Bristol race. He had to manage lap traffic. He had to manage the tires. He did all of that to get his first win of 2024 and his fourth at the Bristol Motor Speedway. Shannon, Jamie, and Larry. Listen, we're going to break down everything, get really into this on Race Hub this week. But when you walk out of the studio today, your biggest thoughts and your takeaways from this night was what can't wait to get my glass of wine that would be my <laughs> first one right there yeah i mean it, it was an entertaining race i mean my gosh 54 lead changes yeah. i mean that is a record for a short track in nascar but denny hamlin he said it there in his post-race interview clinton kevin kept driving that home that old short track mentality all those laps at south side speedway up there near, near richmond i think paid off yeah and i mean for me the 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 whole game of tires and trying to manage that um, I hope the fans embrace that. I, I thought that, that Clinton Kev did a, did a really good job explaining what the drivers are going through. And it was really fun to watch guys manage their speed at the beginning of a run to make sure they were good at the end of a run. And there were some guys that pushed too hard and would go a lot down. I thought it was about as entertaining of a race as you could have. It was a fun race out there. We heard from our top two finishers. Let's hear from the guy who finished third, Brad Kozlowski with Regan Smith. Well, Brad Kozlowski comes home in the top five for the second week in a row, third place. Brad, you ever experienced anything like what you went through today? That was interesting. I mean, it like a little short track race, you know, it, you go to any of these local short tracks, Regan, and that's how they have to race it to take care of your stuff. And uh, it's refreshing. It's, it's different. Uh, I like that, you know, that it takes something different every week. That's what makes Cup so hard is you go in every week and, you know, some weeks you drive them, do you burn them down on this week?
but you, you, you got to take care of them. So it was fun. We had a really good car. We got a little damage on pit road. Otherwise, I feel like we were able to compete with 11 and 19. That took just a tick of speed out of our car. So um, really looking forward to coming back here in the fall and uh, proud of our race today. Nice job. Thanks, Brad. How about Alex Bowman's day? Started 29th, ended up 4th. So much to talk about, but the question is, what's your perspective on the day and the race that we ended up seeing? Yeah, obviously, um, you know, we want this place to rubber up and have two lanes and rip the fence for the fans and, and be able to run hard all day, but um, that just wasn't the circumstances we were given. So I think um, the resin versus PJ1 probably had something to do with that because uh, I don't think the tire changed, but with the situation we had, I feel like uh, our Ally 48 team did a great job at kind of maximizing everything and making the right calls and, and right adjustments throughout the day, knowing how to manage tires. And um, that was something I was really good at when I first went stock car racing. And in the East Series and ARCA and stuff, you don't have a lot of sets of tires. So um, that was something I excelled at. And I feel like I was able to apply that today. Whereas in the Cup Series, we just run hard every single lap, all race uh, these days. So kind of fun to go back to that maybe a little too far back to that, but i um, glad we ended up on the right end of it. I'm so glad these guys are climbing from the car saying how much fun it was out there today. Because you don't know, anyway, it could have gone any way when they tell them we don't know if we have enough tires to make it to the end. Denny Hamlin getting it done out at Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll be right back to wrap things up. The XFL and the USFL merged to create one powerful spring football league called the UFL. These players are going to play hard-nosed, passionate football. They're going to ball out. Spring football is here to stay. The UFL season kicks off March 30th on Fox. It's over 500 laps out of Bristol Motor Speedway. Denny Hamlin, he's grabbing that Gladiator sword. Gladiators on the track managing tires the entire race. Kyle Larson brought it home fifth. He's with Regan Smith. Well, Kyle Larson comes home in fifth place. Uh, a lot to overcome today, nonetheless. So, tire management race was that not a wild one? Yeah, it was weird. It was definitely uh, interesting. You know, I, I thought eventually maybe some rubber would get laid down, but I would say after the second pit stop, I think we all realized it was not going to be the case and was just going to have to manage. And felt like I was doing a really good job managing. We just never got a long run. And then finally, when we got the long run, we had the penalty and I had to go to the back and abuse my right front to, to cords and kind of rode around. Um, and then, yeah, just pitted and accidentally finished fifth. So I don't really I don't really know what happened for us to cycle so many positions ahead. But uh, I'll take it. I hope I never have to run another race like that again. But uh, yeah, it was kind of it was kind of fun just to do it. Hopefully one time. Thanks, Kyle. I, listen, so it's, it's, it's one or the other, right? It's so much fun or it's not. This little one, Molly, she's having a good time out there celebrating the win with her dad. Uh, Going to spend some time in victory lane. How about we hear what Mike Joy, Kevin Harvick, and Clint Boyer had to say about this wild 500-lap race? Back on the concrete at Bristol, a 500-lap race with a record number of lead changes. And when it was all done, three KG veterans end up at the top. Why? Well, I think it goes so much further than just a lap time, right? Of course, you're managing tires for your pace, but you're also managing the balance in your race car, and that's where experience comes in. You cannot be leaning too hard on that right front, too much on the right rear. It'll burn it off. Those guys were able to work with their wisdom, their experience, their knowledge, what they've acquired over 20-some years, and put it to good use tonight. Well, and we saw that with their teammates, because Joe Gibbs Racing had the best cars today, and their other two teammates, Christopher Bell and Ty Gibbs, kind of burned their cars up. So those those two veterans definitely put their wisdom to use today and saved their car and put themselves in position at the end to have a chance to win. Well, I add to that, Brad Kozlowski for Ford, uh, Bowman and Larson for Chevrolet. In a wild day at Thunder Valley when only five cars Cars finished on the lead lap. We've not seen that in 20 years. It was something out there. I love Kyle Larson saying, like, I have no idea what just happened. How many drivers are leaving the track thinking that right I now? I would say it's, it's so much different from, from inside the car because you, you can't see everything. That's, the same thing is happening to all the drivers out there. I think most guys will embrace that. Some that maybe struggled today will, will be a little bit frustrated. But I thought from an entertainment standpoint, it was great. I love the fact that, that experience prevailed yeah. in the end and those guys were able to manage their tires. Um, and overall, I just, I mean, it wasn't the Bristol we expected. It was probably better. Well, all I know is we've been to two 
two completely different tracks, Phoenix and now Bristol. And before Phoenix, we were asking, where is Joe Gibbs Racing? Where is Toyota? They led 96% of the laps Toyota did at Phoenix. Joe Gibbs Racing alone between their four drivers led 383 laps a day. There were a number of laps where they were running one, two, three, four. I know we've got some different tracks coming up, but it looks like to me they have finally showed up. How many pieces of paper did you get through today? There, I notes? have no idea. Yeah, we'll I save no them for idea. tomorrow. Race Hub will be on tomorrow. Brad Keselowski is going to be on the show. You can catch Hub weeknights FS1 at 6 Eastern. Next week, we head to the road course. We're going to go left and right. Austin, Coda. Uh, it's coverage starts Sunday uh, at 2 Eastern on FS1. Continues at 3 o'clock on Fox. Next on Fox, it is Next Level Chef. Thank you for joining us here today. Hope everyone enjoyed in that wild race. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Have a great Sunday evening, everybody. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. How you prove you earn the crown? Winning is in his DNA. How you shut up the haters? I love it. Handle the heat? Who's gonna make the move? It's gonna be a must win. Is this a shooting star? Rock star? Superstar? Okay, okay. Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready?